What's up, everybody? Good to see everyone after uh, last uh, weekend's uh, extravaganza, five-hour, three-minute extravaganza. Um, as uh, those of you who uh, are coming in tonight continue to roll and stroll into the room, um, I got some announcements. Um, it'll take several minutes, probably. Um, so let me uh, start off, first of all, so I don't forget this, uh, a shout out to my newest sub, uh, YouTube Vac, YouTube Vac, uh, who also recently subbed to Karen's Pages channel. Um, so thank you, sir. I don't know if YouTube Vac, uh, do you sell vacuum tubes or something? I, I'm not sure what that's all about, but uh, uh, happy to have you. And I hope that uh, that you tune in and, and hopefully live at some point, if not um if not uh, uh, on rewind, so uh, thank you again for uh, for the sub. Appreciate it. And uh, wanted to give a sorry here. Uh, yeah, I don't expect you guys to uh, obviously memorize that, but um, so you know, over the last few weeks, we've been speaking about uh, Dan Parsons' daughter, eighteen-year-old daughter Zyla, um, who, who who has cancer. And uh, we have that, that, that well, not we, I, I'm not part of it, um, other than to try to push people towards it. Um, you know, they have a, a, a GoFundMe um, for her to help pay for all the, the cancer treatments and whatnot. And I just wanted to, um, I thought I should mention a little uh, quick update I noticed from Friday. So just two days ago, um, she had, uh, and I guess you could read it yourself. I'm popping in the, um, the link to the GoFundMe right there. Um, she said that she had a PET scan done and that, uh, it has shown that the tumor has shrunk by 60% already. She's on, I believe the third round of chemo now. Um, and they're pretty short rounds cause it's the, the, the these first three rounds have, have happened in a fairly short amount of time. Um, so I, I believe it's got to be really, really, it's got to be, it's rough for sure. On, and that'll be rough on anybody. Um, but she says that she's, um, she's, she, she seems happy. She's, she's, she's feeling better and obviously positive about that news. So yeah, that's just really, really great to, to hear. Um, yeah. And I just wanted to, to, to put that out there. And if anybody, again, you can, you can, if you want to donate, you can donate it as little as $5 to the, to the GoFundMe's. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's just really, really happy. Uh, it was fun to finally be able to report some, some good news. Kavi, what's up, dude? She seems to be doing good. Great news. Exactly. Exactly. Very much. So, uh, comic or Boston. Thank you. Hello, sir. Good to see you. Um, so yeah, so I will be back in the chat. Sorry. I know, I know you guys are, are, are always very active with the chats and I'll say hello to you, uh, very, very shortly. Uh, before I get to that, I want to continue with the um, things I wanted to say. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let me see what was there's a there's a few things here. Let me do one at a time. Actually, I'm going to pop another link into the chat. And so this one here, copy and paste and let me enter that. So this one is to Karen. Karen's page, Karen's pages, her channel. That's that's a link to her latest channel for anybody who hasn't been to that channel or isn't subscribed to it. Uh, she put out uh, uh, another uh, fun and funny uh, video. Uh, check it out if you want to see genuinely <laughs> excited, an excited person uh, look at a piece of art. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anybody get as excited and make these funny kind of happy faces that she makes. So. Um, uh, it makes me smile, and, and it's worth it just for that. So uh, uh, check that out. And uh, as I said, all, all her fun, all, all her videos are fun, and and, and they're they're very short, and they're funny, especially the outtakes at the end. But don't jump to the outtakes. Watch the whole thing. Uh, I'm sure she'd appreciate it. Um, and yeah, so there you go. And um, to tie into that, uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, yes. So to tie into that, um, I want to say here, let me put, let me put this for anybody who didn't want to click that, but if you want to click this, I believe this should go straight to Karen's channel, the homepage. Um, and I'm doing both of these things now, 
specifically because uh, for anybody not keeping track of my scheduled shows, this one is happening next week. So Karen will be my in-studio guest next week. And as you can see there, she's a tough chick, so don't mess with her. Uh, as, as it states, she's been protecting naked sexy babes since 2023. Um, so yeah, don't mess. And uh, that, that'll be at my usual time, 8 p.m. And um, as I understand it, there will be a time limit. Um, I'm just worried that the show may devolve potentially into some sort of quasi science fiction related movie type thing for anybody not knowing what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, you're going to have to, um, I, I, <laughs> I strongly suggest that you, if you didn't watch, if you weren't here last week, or if you didn't stick around for the whole show, it was a Census shattering, record breaking, five hour, three minute episode. Um, but the last hour and 10 minutes, it was actually more of a show within a show. It, it, it turned into a comic art collectors chat about movies, um, though more specifically, comic art collectors pile on to Ruben the Collector and laugh at him and make jokes at his expense because he admitted to not liking science fiction, not having seen Blade Runner, uh, not having seen Indiana Jones movies, and a whole sordid affair of, of, of other things that I admitted to. Um, and so here's the thing, though, is that even though it was mostly at my expense, um, I got to say, it was hilarious as all get out I mean, that the, the comments coming from, from the chat, just like it was nonstop hilariousness. Um, so for those of you who didn't tune into the whole thing last week, um, here, let me put this. I'm going to put a link in that goes to that to the episode, okay? And um, I have, I on that episode, I have recently begun uh, time stamping, chaptering my videos. So last week's, the five-hour episode, is, is chaptered. And um, that means here, I actually, you know what? You know, I, I, I can do this real quick with everyone here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen, people. Um, let me see. Share screen. All right. Check this out, everyone. Okay. So, um, get, uh, you know what? I've, I've done a few videos so far. So. I do want to mention for anybody not who hasn't, especially hasn't seen this one. So this, a lot of my videos who who that got lower views uh, on Rewind are some of the best, most entertaining episodes. So this one with my buddy Jason. Okay, let me drag it to the front here. All right, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I say chaptered or time stamped, if you look here, um, on the progress bar, you see that it's not smooth. Stop that. You can see that it's all segmented, right? All little segments. And here, when you put your cursor over it, you get a little pop-up telling you what it's, you know, what it's about. So that's the introduction. The next segment, Jason enters the studio. The next one, sending back all of Hennessy's art. Um, we go here, collecting finished art versus unink pencils. We did a lot of really nice, we covered a lot of nice topics. Sinkevich is an inker, overpowering inking styles, over strong penciling styles, overpowering ink styles over generic penciling styles, Milgram as an inker, is there a penciler inker team whose art you'd avoid? You know, so all, all good stuff related to, to art, collecting finished art versus uninked pencils. Um, and sadly, it's one of the, the lower uh, uh, watched videos. Understandably, of course, that is because of the fact that it was the Super Bowl episode. We, we streamed this live two and a half hours before the Super Bowl. Um, and then, uh, for whatever reason, nobody came back to watch after. So, um, the other one is last week's episode. So, here it is. All right. I want to show this one because we did... Here, let me stop that. Did the same thing. As you can see here, it's all segmented. So, you click on anything here. This is primarily for all you rewind watchers. Okay. Um, and actually, you know what? You rewind watchers... Let me do this one more time. You saw it at the beginning, but 
So as of now, all videos will be timestamped. I will make an attempt within 24 hours. This means that the episodes are broken up into chapters, as I've already explained. Each chapter has a brief description, so you can watch the parts that you prefer to watch. So it's easier for your rewind viewers and quicker. Uh, so you just click on any chapter on the progress bar or in the description. All right. And to give you an example of what that means. So this is last week's episode. As you see here in the progress bar, it's all broken up into a bunch of chapters. And right here, the final chapter, you see it's the longest one. This is the one hour, 10 minute show within a show that became the pilot episode of Talking Film with the live chat crew. Um, so if you just click here, for example, and press play, Marcus, I'm I'm not a I'm not a I'm not I'm not a science fiction guy, and all right, and that's all I'm going to show of that. <laughs> but um, you can do that, rewind viewers, okay. And if you don't want to do that, you can also do this right here in the description of the video. Just open it up so you see the whole description, and under the description, here you go, chapters slash timestamps, and you'll see exactly at the time that every chapter starts, but you don't even have to go back to the progress bar to get there. You just click whatever thing you want here. So the chapter I just showed you, right? The pilot episode of Talking Film with the live chat crew, check it out. Click the time stamp. Marcus, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm, not, I'm not a science fiction guy. There you go. And that's that. So let me come back to you all of you guys and uh show you that uh yes yeah, so for you rewind viewers please take advantage of that and uh as time permits i will be breaking the chap the, the the videos up into chapters for older all my older stuff too i've already done about five or six of them so um i will announce when they're all done but uh from now on going forward the weekly episodes i'll try to do them within 24 hours so if you want to wait a little longer um until they're chaptered and it'll be quicker and easier for you uh, by all means, please take advantage of that. So uh, thank you very much for um, allowing me that. Let me make one last, take a take one last quick look to see if there's anything else I don't want to forget. Uh, please, everybody, if you don't mind, uh, all I ever ask, I never ask anything other than if you can give me a thumbs up, click click the, uh, the thumbs up, which is the like button. Um, I would appreciate that. And um, what else we got? Oh, I did want to say yes. So... That, that link that I put in there, okay, the link that goes to the Neon Dragon show and tell from last week, okay, um, what I wanted to ask of you, because of the fact that I, I never, you guys know I never ask anything from you other than can you please hit the thumbs up, right? I don't ask for money, I mean, except for Zyla Parsons for, for her, her cancer treatments, Um but I, I, you know, I've never asked for money to line my pockets with or whatever to support me or whatever you want to call that. I don't do that. Um, but what I wanted you to do, and 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 you know, I'm practically begging, and the reason is because you know, I know people are kind of lazy. They're they're they don't like to hit even one button to give a like. So I'm always uh, uh, wary to ask for anybody to 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 do anything that takes more than one click. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put that link to last week's episode here again, okay? And I, I believe that should go to it. And um, I just want to ask, for anybody, look, wh whether you saw last week's end of the episode, right? The last hour and 10 minutes or not, um, it was a blast. And I highly recommend that you go, go back to watch that. What I wanted to ask you is if you can go use that link, go to the video, and in the comment section below, um, rather than here in this comment tonight, because it, it's harder for me to track that and have to look through it later. If you just put it in the comment section of that video, just briefly, just tell me, would you be interested if we did that again as a dedicated show, though? So I've got an opening about a month from now. That's my, my, my next available opening. And John, Neon Dragon himself, and I... Um, would like to do that again, but just a dedicated show to uh, us comic art collectors uh, shooting the breeze about movies. It won't be about talking about comic art, although somehow or other that'll probably come in anyways. But yeah, the focus would be 
just just shooting the breeze about movies. Um, so if you could leave me a, a comment in there, I want to get an idea as to whether, get a sense as to whether it would be worth our time or not, or if you, we should just say the heck with it. Uh, the honest truth is, uh, John and I both discussed it after the show. Um, and after that record setting show, by the way, we, he and I spoke for another two and a half hours. Uh, no surprise, right? Um, so yeah, we, we, we felt like even towards the end, when we were hitting that fifth hour, when there was fluctuating between 11 and 14 live viewers, it was still, the chat was still banging. I mean, it was like there was still 30 people here. So for us, even if there was only 10, 15 people, uh, we would still do it if you guys uh, would be here. And yes, there he is. Uh, Neon Dragons Virtual Pizza Night Movie Party. <laughs> and uh, we got a no here from Hoarder's Hide. Or, 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 or rename the channel The Movie Critic or <laughs> Ruben and Ebert. Okay, well, that's one big no. But anyways... Uh, whoever, whoever, those of you who can, please leave a comment on that on that channel so I can look at them later. Oh, look at that! I I I am in the chat now. I'm skipping ahead a lot though. Uh, hey, Karen, by the way, good evening. Yeah, so she is into it. Well, she was there. She see, Karen was funny because she had left. She was watching the show and tell, and then said good night to everybody. And like I don't know, an hour and a half later, suddenly she came back, and I guess she was shocked to see we were still live. And uh, she was the one, she was one of the people egging us on to continue and continue and continue. Um, yeah, and she really loved that whole uh, movie thing. Uh, of course, she was the one piling on me, one of the ones piling on me. So, yeah, um, I don't know what you mean by maybe do a movie club. I, I, I just, I would just like to maybe just, you know, I like to take one step at a time and do just do one episode, see how it goes, you know. Uh, but anyways, I will be back. Let me know if you can in the comment section of that video. And we got to get on to the show and tell with Lee. I'm excited. Um, but um, I will um, bring him in and then say hello to the rest of you. Uh, but yeah, please, everybody, give a warm welcome. And uh, your usual friendliness as, as, you, as you do to everyone who comes into the studio with me to Lee Parmeter. Here we go. What's up, Lee? So sorry for the... <laughs> even longer than i expected man that was a, a lot of announcements i needed to make it's okay you have a lot to talk about that's cool <laughs> i'm 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 uh first of all i i pre oh look at this we're already getting somebody saying hello to you kavi comic books nyc says nice gallery on Kathleen. hello thanks comic books nyc and uh here we go okay now we're gonna get all the hellos Dwayne's a pain what's up what's up tj rick there you go, CJ. What's up, CJ? Rick. Uh, Karen. There we go. And, uh, of course, the Neon Dragon himself. Yeah. I'm familiar yeah. with Neon Dragon. <laughs> and let me, uh, before we get into it, Lee, if you don't mind, I just want to – I don't – these 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 people know. I, I, I My whole show is predicated on making it a show about all of us together. Um, you know, so, so the people in the live chat are part of the show, not just – captive viewers you know um and so I, I interact with them a lot and um so i just want to go back and see who's there um i know you're not there anymore mr red Jack, but uh, yes have a great night thank you as always for dropping in and uh Kavi, of course rickster always oh, said hello to you david good day good to see you sir all the way in oz all the way from australia as always happy father's day and it's not Father's Day, Nas. Okay, you guys do a little, a little different. Okay, yeah, some countries are, are, yeah, that's that's how we do it. Even listen, even even Canada and the United States have some of the holidays on different days, right? Like Thanksgiving and whatnot. So, uh, number one Marvel fan who was here two hours ago and now is back. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to all, of course, absolutely to all of you. And uh, there's Jason, the star of that video uh, example I was showing earlier. Um, good to see you, sir. Good evening. Uh, Vivian, my wife, as always, thank you for the support, hon. Very, very appreciative. Um, CJ, CJ, happy okay, so saying hello. Ah, I see. So, CJ, you got to step out early, maybe if your daughter makes it here on time, delayed out of Miami this morning. Okay, sorry to hear that. Um, no worries, but 
as always, I appreciate when you uh, let us know that you're leaving if you got to leave. But thank you. Appreciate it. And Dadino, what's up, man? Happy Father's Day to you uh, as well, of course. Uh, oh yeah, Kavi, look at that! I finally got along. I finally got uh, got into it and uh, took the time. And Mal, let me tell you, it it it's easy. It's actually easy to do. Oh, but it takes long. Well, it takes long because, of course, my videos are are multi hour episodes, right? So, um, from my experience so far, dude, I can tell you, each episode takes roughly the same amount of time as the length of the episode um but but I, by the last few i did got a little faster so maybe with practice i'll, I'll, I'll keep getting faster still it ain't gonna be easy or right, it's gonna be easy but it's not gonna be fast but it's worth doing so uh thanks as always by the way uh for for <laughs> for everything you've done for me uh, uh to get me into all of this and again i don't know if i should thank you because it's not like i'm getting paid for it but uh i appreciate you thank thank you um thank you so much karen appreciate it as always um, there you go again to, oh, happy Father's Day to Vivian. <laughs> Kavi says you're a father, uh, Vivian. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that. She says she is not. Uh, happy, okay, to all the dads. Well, you see, I personally, I've never really separated. I like to think of stepdads as dads anyway. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really separate. That's why, uh, that's why, um, yeah, whether you're stepmom, stepdad, I, I, I just consider you still a mom or a dad. You know, either way, you're 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 a parent to that child or those children. So um there we go. Thank you. Southern Comic Geek, what's up, Jason in the house? And of course, Dwayne's of Pain had a great time with you last week. Thank you, sir, for participating as you did. Uh JC, as always, appreciate it. And the sentiment, of course, goes out to everyone. And, ah, uh, yes, this is from earlier for Zyla. So who else do we got? I got to go quicker here. Yes, good for Zyla, very much so. Um, Marcus, uh, none, because we will not be doing movies this week. This is all about Lee this week, and we'll leave it that way. Um, like I said, hey, you want to, if you really want to do it, you, you let me know. Leave me a comment on that other video. And, and that way, other people who go to the video on Rewind, if they see all those comments of people saying, hey, yeah, 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 we'll do another one, they may speak up if they want it to. And, you know, the more the merrier. So, uh, Maki Poo Poo, good to see you, sir. Always glad to have you here, Michael. And um, let's see. Yes, Karen picked up some nice pages. Uh, check out that unboxing she did. That was a lot of fun. And uh, you, of course, are welcome as always. Uh, Marcus, it's nice that she predicts the prices, bids on the art, and wins them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for ragging on karen for a change instead of just me okay uh there you go ruin has her and kavi's channels posted on his youtube general page as well well i've always had kavi's and then i i also had will gabrielle's as well i only took it off uh i took will's off last week simply because i want to keep the page cleaner and because he's not active with the channel hasn't been active in over a year year and a half um, so, but if he starts it up, I will re, re add him, you know? Um, and then I added, yeah, I added Karen. So, and, uh, who else is here? Da, 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 da. Hey, 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 of course, these are all old. Um, let me jump ahead. YouTube with the room. I, I like that one. I like that one, Marcus. Um, yeah, I made myself an easy target. Well, we will see. We will see. Uh, somehow I feel like john the neon dragon and i will probably regardless of what anybody says in the in the comments of that video i think we probably will do it and if there's only 10 people that show up the same 10 or 11 or 12 that 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 were there at the end of last week i think it was a great time anyways it was hilarious so uh i'd be happy enough to do it just if those if you guys show up um so a lot of communities are about other topics get into movie opinions as tangents and you see it in games and regular comic games. Okay, good to know. Good to know. But as you know, Kavi, I mean, we've done our own tangents. Um, that 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 episode I showed earlier with Jason Ladwig, I mean, one of the chapters was catch up. If you guys remember, one, it's a really you know two three minutes catch up. Uh, I went off on a tangent about catch up, and you don't you know how you don't replace. There's no substitute for the good stuff. It's Heinz or nothing else, right? Uh, so we do the same kind of stuff. You know, but this is different. This is not a tangent. I'm talking about a dedicated episode where it's comic collectors, because we all know each other already, talking about movies, though. So, um, yeah, so we'll see. But I think we'll do it. 
the timestamp lord rick yes sir uh good lord is that guy ugly i know very a late comment but i know you're, I, I know you're talking about yourself or, or is it me jason i don't know uh, can't wait to see this timestamp on this ec episode explaining that I, I was thinking of actually doing a brief one actually i won't though uh thanks for the chapters nice it will be nice to jump to a specific discussion of a piece of art yes exactly thank you mike Thank you. So finally, somebody no, uh, give me a non-constructive, non-insulting criticism or, or uh, um, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I won't answer your question, Kamara Boston, because I already said it. Uh, now we can go to nine and a half hours. There's a time stamp show on the list. description uh, At the time stamp show. What? On a, on a list in the description. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, that's where I do them. I do them. I put them in there. And that automatically makes them, you know, breaks up on the, uh, on the, uh, on the progress bar. Uh, <laughs> evening, Mikhail. There's another father. Happy Father's Day to you. Uh, looks like everyone wants to review Dumber and Dumber next week. <laughs> Chapters bring on Lee. Okay. Uh, this is all about when someone asks for my moniker. Okay. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Uh, do the movie okay? Now I'm skipping a lot, guys, and I'm almost at the uh, at the current moment. Uh, yes, exactly. Like like Neon Dragon said, it's not a well. I guess a kind, for that week it would be a replacement. Or hey, I wouldn't be. I would not be opposed to doing you know the movie episode on a different day and still doing a, an art episode on the Sunday. Is you know whatever. I'm flexible. Uh, you know, but but. I'm just interested in knowing if you guys would have interest in, in the topic, if that, uh, that as a topic. So good evening. And of course, all the hellos, all the hellos. I'm going forward now quick. Yondu taught us, right? Okay, more jokes. Watch them at one and a half speed. Um, okay, you're out of here. It's still three hours here, right? Uh, have a good uh, the, uh, night uh, and rest of the evening, Neon Dragon. Thank you. And uh, okay, CJ. Great gallery, Lee. Let me guess. You're a... I think you meant to say DC fan. Yeah. Take it, take it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna see. You're gonna see. I could. I, I can tell you guys that uh, having having done up the uh, uh, slides for this episode, um, I can say it's like seventy five percent DC and twenty five percent like everything else. So not twenty five percent Marvel, but twenty five percent combined everything else. Um, yeah. And uh, hey, Mark, good to see you, sir. Happy Father's Day to you. Not sure if in Singapore it's celebrated at all, let alone today. Um, but either way, um, my sentiments still go out to you. And um, there you go. Hoarders Hyde wants to let you know. Great calf. Anyone with Jonah Hex, Warren Spector galleries has to be a cool cat. Don't care what Ruben the Hater said. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Scott? I first of all, I love Jonah Hex. I like war comics, and I love the Spectre as a character, which was part of the reason I had you on the show, and I showed a bunch of Spectre art. What are you talking about, hater? What am I hating? Uh, okay, now you I got you back on my side, at least for the ketchup. Anyways, okay. Um, and, uh, that's about it. Don't do a movie show. Nothing makes Americans more mad than movies. Um, okay. Maybe I want to piss people off. I don't know. Uh, it's got them right. Hellman's Mayo. And it's cool because it's new to me. All right. All right. Everybody. Thank you. Lee. I, everybody. Let's give Lee a hand for having me in. So patient. 30 minutes in. Finally, we get to start with Lee and get into this, uh, comic art show and tell. Um, before we do though, Lee, uh, I always like to give um, all our friends here that are uh, nice enough to tune in live in the chat um, a little bit of background, also not only for them, but of course for myself. I'm always curious. It's just a way to get to know each other a little bit better on a, on a little bit more of a slightly more personal level. Um, if you would be cool with it, uh, we'd love to hear a little bit about maybe how you got into how you discovered comics and then how that led into ultimately you discovering the art and then making that decision to, Hey, let's, uh, I think I'm going to collect this stuff, you know? Sure. Um, I was a comics reader, probably a pretty young age. M my first comic, I'm pretty sure. Um, I can't, I'm trying to remember the n number of it exactly. I, I want to say Superman 263 or something like that. 
Um, but it was given to me on Halloween as a Halloween gift. And I thought that was so cool. And then around that same time, I remember having like a Batman comic. Um, and, and I know it had a man bat in it. Um, I was probably, um, I want to say I was, I had to be like seven years old at the time. Um, and I was living in New Jersey at the time. Um, so yeah, I, I collected comics all the way up to about the age of 12 or so. I, you know, I'd pick them up at the, you know, corner store, you know, off the rack. I like those. And I liked the, uh, you know, like the creepy and eerie comics, the black and white stuff, which. Oh, you were, you were, you were picking those up at, at that young of an age. Yeah. Yeah. Like or more probably towards like age 12, like as a, you know, really? like, yeah, towards 12. And, and I might have even continued more with those books, even like a, a little bit into high school, maybe even too, you know? Yeah. I mean, but the, I, spirit I, too. I, the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I was so totally into it. I liked it. It was only like, wow. Four years old. So, wow. um, Man, but, uh, you're, you're unique. You're uniquely wow. But then I stopped. You know, once you get it, you, you get into high school, though, it's all like girls and cars, right? So yeah, know, but it was it, be, be, be honest with us, because we, you know, with many of the guests uh, that we've had in the studio, you know, we we're all very honest, and that's what that's what that's what my shows are about too. Is to be about being honest, and even if it's a, a little embarrassing to say certain things about yourself, uh, tell me, because I believe what you just said, but when you decided to stop. W would you admit that it, you know, did any of that reasoning also have to do because you were you were scared of getting beaten up or because you were like everybody would treat you like oh you nerd or yeah, or whatever yeah. like not not that I remember to be honest with you because yeah. I didn't like I I wasn't in a clique in a specific clique I was kind of I would jump around to like yeah different people like um you know back in New Jersey we you know we have Me too. A groups we have like um jocks right. And we yeah, yeah. Call heads, which are the ones that would smoke pot. You know, I actually oh, yeah. used to hang around with both groups. So, right. um, um, and I don't remember. I think I just remember um, having other priorities. I think um, okay. where you know I was, you know, I, I did the sports thing. So after school, I'd have to go to practice and all that stuff. I, I you know, I did football and track and stuff like that. But um, you know, uh, and I and I got back into comics though with the Batman movie. So the Batman movie in '89, you know, and I was adult at that point. I had actually gotten married that same year. Oh um, wow! That got me back into it. There was like a, um, a, a comic book store in my town that opened not that long prior to that, called Jim and, uh, Island. Do you, are, 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 are you are you um, you don't have to, of course, by all means. Are you willing to say how old you were when you uh, when you got back into yeah. it in '89? Yeah, I think I was um, I was like 26. So I might have started possibly collecting a little before I got married, 25 or so. But that's okay. quite the dis. You know, we had like 12. I missed yeah. a lot of stuff. You know, I missed a lot of stuff in the '80s there that I well, that's, yeah, that's a huge gap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, huge gap, huge gap. Yeah, I mean, I missed like some really good stuff that I picked up later, like and oh, you know, a couple of things that are my favorite. Um, a series of all like um watchmen is my favorite comic book series of all and then is the it? dark knight the dark knight probably after that so it's in that oh. order and i picked those up after the fact but you know what in the um early 90s you could still buy those original comics for a decent price um mm -hmm. and i don't think I, I well i have the watchmen stuff still but i don't have the you know some stuff i sold my collection when i came out west here to california so i i lost a lot of my collection but i kept all my original art which I started collecting, I want to say around mid nineties. Um, wow. Okay. But I mean, I, I, that, because, was it because of eBay or from conventions? No, actually, my, my very first piece of comic art um, was one of my favorite ca characters, uh, Commandy, um, and I got that through a trade with some. I, I traded some comic books for that piece of art with um, a friend of a friend. Um, who's actually not with us anymore. He passed away not that long after that from uh, cancer. But um, I was right. like, oh, this is really cool. And I, and I was a Jack Kirby fan, so I was looking at this page, and I'm trying to remember off the top of my head which issue it's from. It's it's later on. It's either in the 40s or the, or, or later, maybe even in the 50s. Um, but I kind of knew it at that, that time. I'm like, well, this is not a Jack Kirby page, but it's still commanding, and that's cool, you know? Um, but I didn't – I don't think I bought, bought any – art for at least a couple of few years after that because um i was unfamiliar with you know 
you, you didn't see it that often. You know, I'd go to comic shows and you wouldn't really see the art sold that often. It's right. not until I, until I started going to the bigger shows in, in New York City, which weren't really that big anyways at that time, like the mid-90s. No. You know, right. um, you, you had a couple of shows that died out and then um, the Big Apple shows replaced them for a little while and then they were kind of small, you know. And Yeah, um, I got to I gotta, I gotta admit, I mean, I, I uh, from the – Late nineties, I want to say about uh, nineteen ninety eight till about two thousand five. I went to New York every single year um, for the for for the the convention, but like it was always so like I was so shocked that it was so small. Like this is New York City, the, the birthplace of comics, and I was just like you know I I'd been to San Diego multiple times. I'm like, how the hell is it possible? That New York City, Manhattan, the, the the biggest show is this little rinky, kind of rinky dinkish. I don't know. It was just I, I couldn't believe it. I, I don't know. So I don't know what happened. It seems like it seems like New York lost its way with the whole convention scene for a while there in those days. You know? You know what's interesting? There there was um, a show like I want to say like the late eighties. I think the guy's name was Fred Greenberg, and he actually used to have the shows at um, Javits Center. Um, so that was, those were pretty good sized shows, but then um, he just stopped doing the shows. I don't know if it was the, the cost of renting the space. Um, he also did shows in like Paramus, New Jersey. Um, I, can't, I can't remember where else, but you know, I, I had got to those. Those are some of my first shows. And, um, but yeah, he, I remember only going to a couple of shows in the early nineties and all of a sudden he just dropped off the face of the earth. And there was a gap of quite a few years there in the, in the um, early to mid nineties of no shows until, um, uh, Carbonero came along and started his uh, um, big his uh, Big Apple. Um, the show. Big Apple, yeah. Yeah, the and they Apple. were they were kind of like you know, I, I appreciate Mike did that and stuff like that, but Mike is like one of those guys you kind of got to be wary of a little bit, you know, <laughs> um, like one of those old school comic dealers that you always hear about. Like, yeah, um, yeah, he's gonna try to get the most he can out of you, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, he's a, he- yeah, he's a character. Those who know who but we're talking what, about know what you mean. Yeah, he brought the he brought the shows back to New York, though, which was great. But they were yeah. like, you know, in like um, well, the Hotel Pennsylvania, which apparently now is closed down. Like, so he brought them back to there because there used to be a lot of cons there. As a matter of fact, I remember my dad when I was so it was seventy six. So I was twelve years old at the time. So I probably did collect comics a little later than that. But he brought me to this. It was called the Supercon, DC Supercon at the um, Hotel Pennsylvania, which is right across the street from Madison Square Garden. And I still like have my um, my brochure from that with some signatures of some guys and theirs and stuff like that. But I don't think we were there that long. So I don't, I remember it a little bit and it was, you know, a bunch of comic book dealers, a bunch of long boxes. You go yeah. check it out and stuff. It was cool. I, I really, it's one of my cherished memories uh, of my dad um, that we had. You know? So and another one was going to see Star Wars, which I know you wouldn't know anything about. <laughs> Well, I do know something about it, <laughs> and I and I can at least say I have not only have I watched it the whole trilogy, I've watched it many times throughout my life. But anyways, that's a whole other story. Anyway. A whole other show. <laughs> it's a whole exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Well said. A whole other show. Exactly. So um, no, but that's 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 um, that's interesting. And and I gotta know, um, did you at what point did you? discover the whole you know comic art on ebay thing and get sort of captured because everybody seems to have been caught into that you know what's weird is that um i don't remember really buying a heck of a lot of comic okay. art on ebay i remember oh. selling some of my comic art on ebay wow funny but, yeah and i sold it I, you know i should have held on to most of that that i sold um but i you know what i would do when i would go to a show um and I would go to this show in uh, Spring Valley, New York, where um, there was this teacher that threw this show every year. And he'd get all the old, great old guys to go there. And these guys, they were selling their art, like, really cheap. Like, um, Bob Smith, he's an anchor from D.C. Like, literally, yeah. he would be – sometimes I was picking up pages from him for, like, five bucks a piece. I was like – that, that I, I didn't pass it up. And, and I was still being picky. I was like, I, I, you kidding me? I'm being picky about a $5 piece, piece of art. Right? Rick, Rick. Rick. Rick is going to like lose his mind now because he actually brought it up. I believe it was last week um, where he brought up, you know, Bob Smith, you know, and, yeah. and uh, so funny that you would mention him now again, two weeks in a row. That's crazy. And talk about how you picked up $5 pages from him. So that's really cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so um, I, I would see him. I would see um, Kurt Schaffenberger at these all the older guys. Um, yeah, a, a nice, you know, it was a lot of people that you you would never have been able to meet otherwise. And and again, this is their this is the mid to late nineties now. So this is already, you know, this is 25 plus years ago. So a lot of these people aren't with us anymore. Um, yeah. So it was great to, to get to see them. It was cool. No, no, it's great. Yeah. That's, that's why, you know, it's nice. They, I always say the same thing, you know, if you've got a chance and you do, if you can get to a show that's not too far from you and you have, you know, well, I mean, it's kind of getting too late now, but the legends, right. Um, we had a lot, a lot of, opportunities to sort of go and see them you know because they you know they're they're aging they were aging and getting on and so on and so forth and so eventually they won't be around and then you you end up regretting it when you don't have that you know when you did it when you know that you didn't take that 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 chance um just really quick um have you ever been to the uh, new york comic-con that ever since they they uh took over what in 2006 the the, the made it large yeah, yeah. I, I was so, so those last uh four years that i was in um the New Jersey, New York uh, area. I went to the first, the first four, and um, I remember the first one being a mess. Like, like okay. they didn't have enough volunteers and stuff. And I, I was, was there. Like, I was there. I don't remember. I can't. Yeah, and I can't. I can't say I remember it being a mess. I, I, I may have forgotten. I just remember not being able to, to, to get information from anybody. Like the volunteers. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> okay, maybe so maybe okay, maybe a bit disorganized. Session? Yeah, yeah, but you know what? It yeah. got better each year, and 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 it was big, and it was nice, and you know they had the artist alley and everything there. I got to let me see. I can't remember if I met Gene Colan for the first time there, but I met him a couple times, and it was there. And then at another high school, where that same guy at Spring Valley moved to a a, a town where I used to work, which is pretty cool. okay. In and and again, when you old guys, okay, and when you attended those those times, was that because you were still in Jersey at the time? Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. When, when I attended, yeah, I lived in New Jersey and I would just take the path train into New York City to work. So I worked yeah. in Manhattan. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so it was no big deal to, you know, I was used to taking the train into uh, Manhattan. And then even we would just sometimes take the ferry because the ferry would bring you right up to almost to the Javits Center. It was like right, right across the river from it, you know? Right. So when, I think so, I did that one year. Okay. And, and have you been back since you moved out west? Um, no, unfortunately, oh. I haven't because okay. I don't have too many ties there where I can, you know, like you know, stay. You know, it's can be expensive. You know, flying across the country just oh, to sure, sure. on. And you know, I went Absolutely. to Comic Con uh, San Diego one time when I was in New Jersey because I really okay. wanted to go, and that was like two thousand eight. Um, okay, so, yeah, it, it can be expensive doing that stuff. That's you just answered um, Stanley's question if you had ever gone to San Diego. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, okay. as far as San Diego now, um, as soon as I got here, um, I, I was actually, I would, I, I wasn't working when I first got to California. So that, that was kind of tough. I, could, I had a hard time finding a job, actually. Okay. And um, so for San Diego, when it came around, though, I'm going like, oh, I want to go to San Diego. Oh, I need, I know David Spurlock from Vanguard Productions. And I used to help him, um, like, I actually made, like, some of his earliest banners. I worked for a company called Agfa. We used okay. to do um, photographic stuff. And oh, okay. I would, his his first big banners for Vanguard and stuff that he would mount the foam board. Those were ones that I actually printed for him off our large format printers. So oh, um, he used to trade me books, or he would just give me access to the the guys. You know, Starenko. I go see him all the time, and Carmen Infantino, and that was just so cool that I got to hang out with those older guys who I was a huge fan of and, and really appreciated. You know. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. when so then when I realized, oh. David's got a table at San Diego. I'll just ask him if he needs help. I, and, um, you know, I can just drive down there and I wound up staying with my cousin. So, yeah, okay. I did San Diego like uh, 2011, 2012, pretty much regular until uh, like school interrupted me when I went back to school. And oh, you went back to school? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, wow. I wanted to do something different. Yeah. What, what, what the, can I ask what, what you went back for? I went, I, I, I went back for something in the medical field because I knew um, since I was wow. in graphics previously, um, it was tough to get a job in graphics anymore. I was oh. involved in printing or like a pre-press and stuff like that. And I had a lot of technical knowledge and everything, but I could not get a job in California. Like, you know, printing is huge in New York and yep. then the second big city is, is uh, Chicago. But, mm -hmm. you know, L.A., everything had like died away. There was hardly right. any work to be had in printing. So 
I went back to school and I got a degree, which I didn't have before. And I, wow. I'm, I'm an RN now, actually. So I wow. Yeah. Good for you, man. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a uh, challenge. It's not. But, uh, yeah. I have, good, I have a very supportive wife, so I, have, I really oh, appreciate it. I, you, ha you would have to. Um, that, honestly, it's commendable. Like, it, it's, uh, you know, when I had left school and then I tried to go back and I was still like in my, you know, it's, I was young. I was still in my 20s, my first half of my 20s. And I found it so difficult. Yeah, it was just weird. It just I felt like so much older than everybody else it, it, around me. The whole scene was, it was just weird, you know? So, yeah. so to go back as late as you had ended up going back, that's, that's phenomenal, man. Like to, and you stuck through it. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So congrats to you, man. That's it it had been 30 years since I was, was since that first semester of college. And I, wow. went back. I was like, that just that's kind amazing. of gives you an idea of how old I am. Yeah. That's no, no, no. But that's, yeah, that's amazing. No, but good for you. You did what you have to do. And that's, yeah. that's really commendable. So yeah. you should be happy and, and proud of yourself for that, man, for sure. I am. I am proud of that. And, and, you know, and this career is a good career. I love helping people. It's something I wasn't able to do before. So, I, you know, I can make a big difference in people's lives. So I really it, and it pays pretty good. Being a nurse does pay. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Good. Apart from you know what you hear, but there's a lot. Of, it's a very stressful job, but I've always been used to stressful sure. jobs. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I might as well yeah. help people while I'm stressed out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 at least you know, like you said, it's one thing. Like you know, no matter what you do in life, we're all stressed, right? At some on, on some level or other, you know, sure, some more than than others, whatever. But everybody's got some levels of stress because of their work. But when you're in that field. You get that added to at least to me. It's the added bonus of knowing that you're helping. You're you're directly helping to 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 make people's lives better. It, it just to me, I've always felt like that that makes a difference, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can kind of rest on on that that no matter how tired and 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 and, and exhausted you are on any given day, whatever. But like you 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 know, you're you're helping a lot of sickly people. So. Yeah, I, 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 that's like I said, it's very, very commendable. So, uh, yeah, Usually, I, 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 would do, I would do one of these if I were you. Go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. There you go. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Usually, like the worst uh, time in somebody's life, really. So, like, if for if you're able to like help them get past that in uh, um, in any manner, then it's it's yeah, it helps you feel good about yourself too. I like that. Uh, absolutely, exactly. And um, I just wanted to to to, to rewind the uh, coffee earlier. I didn't forget about it, Kavi. I don't know if you're still there, but um, I wanted to wait for an opening. Uh, you had mentioned, um, and I don't want to stay on this for too long. We got to move forward. But you had mentioned that you had, uh, as a kid, gotten a comic as a gift on Halloween. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, let me see if I can find it. Ah, here. So Kavi says, trick or treat or panel pages. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I'm also wondering, like, is... Is that a thing? Like, do some Americans hand out gifts on Halloween, or was it just a coincidence? Somebody oh, gave you a comic on it happened to be Halloween, or? Yeah, I, you know what? I mean, people are creative, I guess, with what they uh, give out to kids, and that's you know those comics back then. That was a twenty cent comic, I believe. So it oh. wasn't, you know. Oh wait, which... wait, wait, wait! Are you saying you got it? Because I, th I, th I, I thought I remember you saying the word gift. Are you saying you got it yeah. given to you as you as a as a, while yeah. you were doing the yeah, so they took that. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, that's cool. wild. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, my God. Back then? Oh, I would have yeah. loved to have received comics instead of treats. Yeah. Oh. It's one, oh, of, one of my goals is to get at least one. It was a, um, I'm pretty sure it's a Kurt Swan um, pencil book. And I can't remember if it's a, uh, um, Anderson's uh, inking, but um, it's one of my goals is to try to get a page from that at least. I know I've seen the cover um, on CAF. Um, somebody made me aware that it was on CAF, and because I put out, has anybody seen this cover? And they're, and they're like, "Did you check CAF?" And I'm like, "Oh, I should. I'm on CAF, right?" And yeah. um, and it was on there. And I actually sent the guy a message, private message. Listen, I gave him that whole story that this is the first copy. I have. If you ever think of selling this, I would be interested. And I went back and found it, and I. I I think it's from his purchase, um, the heritage price, but it, you know, he bought it in like 2000. So he'd already bought it 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. Well, at that time it was, you know, affordable. I'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll pay yeah. twice what you paid for it then when sure. it's really worth, you know, at least like 
10 times that minimum, you know, so. Yeah, 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 for sure. But I for would sure. pay that. I would pay the 10 times that if he would sell it to me. Right? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Rick earlier had, uh, of course, mentioned $5 a page. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Only five bucks pages, five buck pages that passed through my hands were Bill Jaska Sable Second Series pages. But you know what, uh, Rick? I was collecting that myself. I was reading that. So had I had access to, to those pages, assuming I even had the five bucks per page, which I probably didn't back then, whenever it was that you're talking about, but had I had the money, I mean, you know, well, that, that, it's still it's something. You still were able to get five buck Sable pages. That's still pretty fun. But but know also that those five dollar pages, those were Robin pages too. I don't know if Bill, if um, if he was like, okay, well, I want to just get rid of these because I bought like Catwoman pages off him for like twenty bucks. So there was a difference in the pricing. It's not like he sold everything really cheap. Um, it just happened to be like more of like just the panel pages. Um, and it was Robin. So, but I liked Robin. So I was like, okay, I've got like eight of them, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Okay, well, um, Mikhail has stepped in just about five minutes ago to let us all know his wife did a second career registered nurse. That. Yeah, cool. Yeah, oh, kudos. Wow, fantastic. Wow, great for her too. Um, Mikhail, if you're still there, tell her to give herself a pat on the back too. That's awesome. Anybody who returns uh, should be commended, especially if you can finish it. I mean, it's, it's tough when you're older, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. Because you're in such a different place in your life at that point, you know, in, in, in every which way, you know. And, um, yeah, Comic Girl Boston says, yeah, you do, in fact, make a great difference in people's lives. So kudos to you. Um, Ruben, the fast time that <laughs> Rage on. I <laughs> See, they always have to make fun of me. Uh, better than shuffling paper. That's certainly for sure. Um, so Kavi says, I also got a comic as a gift for Halloween a couple of times in the nineties. Wow. It is the kind of American thing. I never have, it never happened here. Wow. That's funny, man. That's so I might've cool. even done that when I was older too. When I was given that, I think I might've have? done that too. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Marcus says, give out the free comic book day comics. You know what, Marcus and everybody else, I don't know if this happens on your side of the border. But over, and I assume it does because you know human behavior is you know pretty much the same way, same way everywhere. But here, see, I always thought that comic free comic book day. I thought the entire impetus for its invention was to try to get new people through the door, that sort of thing. Here, try these out, right? Try these out. But then, several years ago, I decided, okay, I'm going to go and check out my one of my local shops, free comic book day. Let's see what it's all about. I go in and I'm like, oh, where's the free comics? And the guy points me to a table and he says, uh, uh, there's a limit per, uh, of two. I'm like, okay, I guess he had, you know, limited quantities. That's fine. No problem. I wasn't even sure I wanted to take any. I just wanted to see what it was all about. And he goes, yeah, limited uh, to, to two. And um, that there's the list of the comics available, uh, but some of them are already all gone. And I was like, it's only been a couple of hours since you opened. How, how are some of them all gone or whatever? Well, yeah, people come and they, 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 they take them quick or whatever. And then I started asking him questions. And it turns out, by my being inquisitive about it, it turns out that all the people, the majority of the people taking comics on free comic book day are the usual customers. It's the regular customers that now they just want to return to get a bunch of comics that they don't have to pay for. So, so it's not encouraging new readers. It's just giving, it's like you're, you're, you're giving this, you're just giving more free stuff to the people who already buy from you. Like, I don't, I don't know. Is that how it is at, at, at everybody? Let me know. Is, is that your experience, Lee? I mean, I, I just find it's pointless. What's the point of that? I don't get it. I, I actually don't usually go to a free comic book day because, I mean, I might be working, but also, like, it gets it's such a hassle to go in there. If they have a creator that I want to see, because um, I'll give a, a shout-out to my local comic book store. It's uh, uh, Collector's Paradise. He actually has uh, three different locations, but one in Pasadena, which is the next town down from where I live. And um, and he would have some good creators sometimes, and I'd go specifically for that. But, you know, you get a big line in there, and it's like, okay, do I have, like, uh, two hours to wait on a line so I can talk to this creator? Yeah. So a lot of, you know, I think the first few years, um, and he was his store was kind of new there. It was about, like, 12 years ago. 
um, I would go and, you know, I'd see some of the older creators I wanted to see. And then after a while, I just, the lines got too big and, um, and you know what, most of those uh, free comic day books, a lot of them are just reprints just to get people like, right. uh, and maybe they're reprints of a current series to, to get them to like, to hook them essentially. Right. Um, yeah, of course. but yeah, they, and they know, know, getting them too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they, they, these are uh, the stores, they have to still pay for the comics. I think they're cheap, but they, so they're they don't cost them that much, but they still pay something for those comics. It's a, a marketing tool, I guess, for them, right? But like you said, it, it's really you thought the purpose was to get new people into the comic books, uh, but and I do kind of see that at the store that I go to. I see new people coming and stuff, so that's good. Okay, Marcus, yeah, Marcus just said that he's seen families, so at least there's some, you know, but. The impression I really did get, a very strong impression, was that the majority of the freebies get vacuumed up by by the regulars, people who already have been collecting and reading for years. So that, that to me, that just turns me off. So I, I don't know, whatever. I'm not saying stop free comic book day. I mean, everybody seems to love it. I I understand stores typically are packed like crazy on that day. But again, if the regulars want to go get free freebies, I, I understand why it's packed. I just wish it was packed with maybe people who, you know, I don't know, maybe they watch the movies and they kind of heard about it or something and, you know, but they're not really comic book readers. You know, that's kind of what you wish, but I guess, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah, this um, past free comic book day, I was actually in Savannah. And, um, oh, Georgia. You know, I, checked out, I checked out a store there and, you know, like you said, uh, they had a little bit of a line. It wasn't really even that busy. Because Savannah is more of like a touristy town, you know. What I mean, there's not like yeah, you can't, it's expensive to live there actually. And um, but yeah, I think the people that were picking up their books were the regulars that get the free comic books. I don't think that many people knew about Free Comic Day, and I don't even know if they had that much advertising in their window, you know. So yeah, no, I, I get that. Um, yeah, Mikhail, uh, myself as well. So after my first experience, um, I returned. I don't know, probably over the next three or four years specifically just to trying to get my daughter hooked you know hoping that um yeah that she would she would you know get bitten by the bug of reading comics um and i gotta say props to mark uh or i should say marc parento french i do live in a french part of the country um props to him um the 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 the, the, the owner of the store that i i usually would go to because not only does he give away the free freebie comics that that you know all the stores get? He also says, "Oh, children under twelve or something like that, you get up to ten comics free from the. You can choose ten comics free from the dollar bin." Like what? Wow! Like for kids twelve years and under, man, you 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 know if parents if parents bring their kids in, like that's a lot of comics he could be giving away. From his dollar bins like yeah and believe me his dollar bins are actually pretty good so yeah so pro big 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 props to him and anybody else uh, around the world who owns a store and, and and tries to do that that kind of stuff you know and uh, take it to another level um yeah it's amazing uh so yes ruben it was a it was to get foot traffic but people always screw things up yeah well yeah lost leader like market says yeah i get i get that um it was like my happy hour price <laughs> uh those aren't usually hot investment comics anyway yeah, yeah yeah i get you okay um all right so we you want to get into uh the show and tell portion of the show sure sure i, I did want to point out one thing to a comic sure. that I saw earlier i don't think you got to it it oh, was uh, I, if i missed it i'll, I'll try i'll try yeah. to find it what was it about it was comic art boston who, who oh, okay. i guess he took a look at my calf and um and he oh. gave me props for on uh, my Captain America pages because that is one um, mm. Marvel character that I do still collect art from because I, I just love the idea of Captain America. It kind of it, it's, it's one? similar to Superman for me. You know what I mean? Like Captain America and Superman. I, I but, those are two okay, big so guys. That, what's that? So that's not that's not the comment you're talking about. No, I'm just talking about a comment that um that uh, comic art Boston put in the uh, comment area. Yeah, I think you had missed it, so I wanted to comment on it because yeah. he, he gave me posts oh, for my Captain America pages, yeah. Oh, okay, that's what I'm saying. So so the comment you see on the screen is not the one on, that you're talking about. Do you, do you see a comment no, right on the No. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but uh, yeah, so so, yeah oh. he put a couple comments, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Earlier, I think, than that one. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I'm looking for it. I, I, I'm seeing a That's bunch okay. of his comments, but I don't see one related to Cap. Was it somebody else, perhaps? No, I thought it was him. Yeah. Um, so. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I'm looking at all of them, and I, I'm not seeing it. Maybe I'm wrong. So, yeah, maybe I don't know. Was, what... uh, maybe it was uh, CJ Design. Let's see. No, it's Comic Art Boston. Yeah. Do you see it? Oh. Yeah. You, How far 5, up 22. is it? 522, he posted it. Oh, uh, 22? Oh, 522. My, my time is 522. No, no, yeah, 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 but 22. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're on different hours, but the same minute. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a long time ago. Hold on, let me get yeah. to that then. All that's right. That's why, I, you know, I wanted to make sure I got mentioned. That's all. So, is it this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, enjoy yeah. your cap gallery. Happy that you have a great uh, cap art despite being a DC fan. I'm sure everyone will want to know why you make that exception. Okay, so did yeah, did you want to explain and talk about, about that? I, I just have you... always been a, a Captain America fan, I guess. Oh, I, mean, I, see, I used yeah, to yeah. read all the comics in the 90s. I would read the Marvel and stuff. I just eventually, you know, and, and right now with buying original art, it is way easier to afford DC art. Um, you know, especially the older Marvel art, it's like, it's a... I, I couldn't, you know, I'd, yeah. I'd be broke trying to buy some of that stuff. So, you know, I'm like, I'm happy that the stuff I like isn't really the expensive stuff sometimes, you know. But, yeah, well, when, I, 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 when I see a nice Captain America page that's in my price range and I just like it, I, I just I jump on it. So Yeah. One one thing that's that's for certain that I think we'll all agree on is the fact that, and listen, you should collect what you collect because you love it, not because mm – -hmm. Only oh, it's cheaper. I'll just buy that. No, obviously you gotta like it at least, if not love it. And then you know, um, but the nice thing about being a DC fan more so than let's say Marvel or, or, or what have you is that just because of the you know life decades long, much stronger popularity of Marvel or DC, the DC fans. Boy, they 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 save a lot of money in the original art market because of the fact that, you know, character for character, artist for artist, I mean, it's it's way more affordable than the the, you know, what you would try to label as an equivalent Marvel version of that page, let's say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um yeah. So so, you know, like, like the best DC stuff, you know, the you know, the most popular, let's say Batman or whatever, for example, you know. Batman, yeah, some of it's expensive, but you can still find a lot of very affordable Batman art out there, much more affordable than, the, let's say, X-Men, right? So that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. You take the, the most popular character and it's equivalent at Marvel, it's always going to be much cheaper if, if you know, the, the DC stuff. So that's a nice thing. That's, that's a nice bonus for the people that are more into DC, you know? Yeah. And the current stuff is less expensive too. Like like more like uh, some of the newer artists. Um, of course, not all. You know, a lot of the artists now are doing it digital, so you, you don't even have artwork to buy. I won't do the mono print thing. I don't think they're worth it. Um, and um, and also sometimes you got to deal with you know a lot more um, like of the process if you don't like that. So like if you like a really nice clean line, that's what the the old books would bring you sometimes. But they also had like a lot of paste up, a lot of you know, a lot of blue line editorial scribbles on them and stuff like that. But you know, it's it's yeah, all yeah. part of the process. So I I like that, you know. Absolutely. Mike at nsnart.com says DC better and more affordable. You heard it here first. <laughs> Everybody's gonna become DC collectors now. <laughs> and Comic Art Boston, you make a very clear but evident point, I would think that uh even DC artwork is more expensive, of course, because everything is more expensive. I mean, everything. But right in context, still always much cheaper than than the Marvel. So, um, Alberto Gonzalez, what is up, sir? Good to see you. Happy Father's Day to you as well. Good to see you, my friend. I hope you hang out a bit. Um, and when you, of course, as soon as you mention Cap, I'll <laughs> he has to show up. It's like. <laughs> Are, are, do, do you know him, uh, Lee? Are you familiar I, with him? I know him? of Alberto. I, I've, uh, okay. I've actually, I think I've competed against him on a couple of uh, pieces of art, either on Dueling Dealers or not necessarily <laughs> competed because there it's like. A I know what you mean. Character. But yeah, on, uh, on one of the, I think the, I think he grabbed a, uh, 
<laughs> Adam Kubert, uh, Superman page away from me just not that long ago. I was really? like at, a, at a book festival. So I'm on my phone trying to, to get this page. And and I think it was Alberta though, kind of. I'm like, damn it, you're supposed to like cap. What's going on here? <laughs> Is that true? Alberto, let us know if that's true. <laughs> He's blaming you, so you better speak up. <laughs> um, look at him. He's saying, hey, Lee, I love your Butch Geist Invaders cover. I have a couple of them, and I love Butch's work. Okay, but now answer our, answer Lee's uh, accusation towards you. <laughs> we will wait. We will wait. <laughs> Timothy Guerrero, all the way from El Salvador. Wow. We got a truly international audience tonight. What is up, sir? And uh, who's the, who are you? Who's the claim Ninja. jumper? Because I know. Oh, you mean uh, Alberto? He he claim jumped you. Okay. And you know what? I, I'm not. Sh I'm not 100 percent sure. There's he's another kidding. Alberto. Oh, no, oh, he's see, the bear. I think it was <laughs> <laughs> So we can we can we can safely assume <laughs> you oh, were right. Captain right, America, come on. <laughs> Carlito, what's up, man? The art's coming soon, my friend. The art's coming in, in a few seconds, actually. A few more moments. Um, the phone is the worst for bidding and claiming. Oh, that's old school. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't do that. And claiming if you have fat fingers like me. Um, Feliz Dia del Papa. Yes, thank you. Uh, likewise, if you're a dad, are you a daddy? Uh, let me know. But if you are, yeah, absolutely. Same, same, same to you, my friend. Um. The, yeah. Nice, Rick. Exactly. The fifth bid won it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alberto, why don't you release the page to Lee? Oh, come on. <laughs> Guilting him in for that. Come on. That's not cool either. I mean, maybe it wasn't cool for him to do it, but then again, it's you know, it's a it's the wild west in this hobby when it's when it comes time to bidding, right? So it's well, like the each each man for themselves kind of thing, right? Oh, that's funny. Um, let me get to this question, Stanley. I know you. I love your. You always have the questions, but I want to get to a little bit of art. Unless you can take this quickly, Lee. Let me know. So Stanley's asking, has Lee always socialized with other collectors? Yeah, I'm a fairly social guy, and um, but I don't always get out to all the different cons and stuff like that. You know, like um, actually, me and Ruben, um, I think our introduction was I think I bought something from you once, and then every once in a while, you know, we'd see each other, whether it was on um, um, the CAF uh, things and stuff. We'd communicate back and forth, and we'd send emails back and forth, something was going on. Um, but uh, yeah, um, there's, a, there's a couple of guys that I, I've been friends with that are on my Facebook um, friends too. Um, and I like to get involved, you know, I get, uh, I'm a, I have a few of the Facebook uh, pages relating to, you know, selling art and, um, of course, the original comic art fans um, on Facebook, I participate in that and I'll post on there. So, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I do, I, I like to talk about this. I want to, I would love to have a get together down here in uh, the Los Angeles area, um, I mean, they do have the comic art show now in Los Angeles area. I actually skipped the last one because it's always the same dealers, and, and a lot of them, they don't, like, haggle really. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. Well, I mean, you know what a lot of people will say, Lee, to that is, well, if you want to have something like that down in L.A., you got to start it. Somebody's got to start it, right? Start it, so, yeah. Maybe I should yeah. do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean that's kind of what I'm hinting at, you know. Yeah, I got you. Not, 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 you know. Yeah, it's look, it's I get it. it it's 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 not easy to do it, uh, especially if you don't have your own sort of space that you could do it in, because then you gotta, oh god, I gotta find a place that we we need to rent, and you know. So I, I can see it, it, it. It's not easy, right? And that's why a lot of people, most people, don't aren't capable of being the ones to do it, you know. So that's the thing, but. Uh, the word's out there, so any uh, L.A.-based collectors, you, you got another guy here who's interested in doing it, and if it's not him and you're interested enough, you know there's another guy. And I mean, geez, it's, it's L.A. for crying out loud. There's got to be, I would think there's got to be a boatload of collectors that could be in that area that could fill a giant room, you know? So that's, that's my thoughts. Uh, oh, uh, Mikhail is asking, are you south of the city? I'm actually um, east of the city. Yeah, so I'm in um, Altadena, which is directly north of Pasadena. Okay. Um, Marcus, 
all it'll always be the same dealers that show. Yeah, but I I think. Oh, maybe I misunderstood, and I'm sorry if I did, Lee. I thought, um, yeah, I think I misunderstood. I was thinking you were talking more about a art collectors that get together and gather together to you know show each other's portfolios, and whoever wants to wheel and deal can do that too. I wasn't I wasn't really thinking about a, a mini con just right. for art. Yeah, yeah. No, and I and I got that, and um, and that's why I kind of like just followed up with like, like kind of where you were going. But yeah, yeah. Um, my originally originally I had this, I was talking about the uh, LA Comic Art Con, I think is what it's called. And yeah. you know, I saw Marcus's comment on it. They always have the same, um, you know, they always have the same uh, dealers at that show, and that and that's correct. And it's not a very big room, so but it's something. It's like I used to like to go to the. Um, one back east in um, New Jersey, and I think it's I think it's still New Jersey. It might have moved to New York at this point. Um, I can't remember the name of it or whatever. But yeah, I, the last couple of years I was in New Jersey, they had that one going on, and that was great. So, um, well, he, he, but that's he, what Anthony's always at, you know. Right. Well, M- M- Mikhail's just saying that he's asking because he was thinking of hosting something north of San Diego, and now he's but that's two hours for you, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, Mikhail. I, I, I would drive. I would drive that if it's on a day I'm not working or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's not. And it doesn't. As long as it doesn't start late and end real late to where I'm getting home. But you know, I, I you know, because by midnight I turn into a pumpkin. So yeah, 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 yeah. But no, but that's great. I was gonna say, Mikhail, it, it's. It don't you should never kind of say that. Don't 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 assume that. Oh, you know, but that's two hours. So forget it. Because I was gonna say it's. He already said it. But I was gonna say Lee. You never know if he's available. He might be willing to drive two hours. Shit, I would love to be able to drive two. I drive. I told you guys before, for my gathering that I go to every year, I drive about uh, what is it five and a half hours. So I mean, mind you, my friends to my friend's house, Jeff Singh, another collector, right? But. And he allows me, he's got room, so I stay with him for the weekend kind of thing, you know. Uh, I stay with him a couple of nights. Um, but still, I gotta still I still have to dr- do the drive, the round trip drive. It's a, you know, it's not it's not a short drive for just to just to go to a, a one day gathering. But yeah, people for two hours, I think I would think a lot of people would be thrilled to to attend something like that, you know. So um yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um Let's see. I wish Torpedo Show in Vegas where they are headquartered. Yeah, the Torpedo Show is pretty good, too. They had the Torpedo Show there. But, you know, with the Torpedo Show, they started – they're continuing um, that thing with the, you know – I don't know. It's Our, 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 our hobby is expensive. And, um, you know, when you have to, you know, pay for signatures and stuff, that's a little bit of a turnoff to me. Like when you have to pay for – you know, and Torpedo kind of pushes that a lot, you know. Oh. And, but I, you know, yeah. I do like that show. It's right in Hollywood, essentially. But they can't. The last one they canceled, which I'm not sure what happened. But they oh. they canceled. I think I went to the. I think I went to two in a row, and then the last show got canceled. So I'm not sure what happened. I, it's at the Palladium. The Palladium is like a, a club, and they have yeah. it right there. And it's. Uh, I hadn't. Uh, when was that? I hadn't heard about that. That's interesting. They usually have them in, I want to say, July. So if it's going to be happening, you know, I had a hard time finding it. And then I, I found advertisements for it. And then soon after that, I saw that it was canceled. And they only canceled it like either like something like one week, maybe two weeks max before the show. So for anybody that already made plans, they were kind of screwed. Right. So but, that, but that one that got canceled, when was that one scheduled for? That was last, I, I want to say last July. Oh, last summer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, Carl, you're very, very uh, welcome. Very, very welcome. Mahalo, uh, uh, and, and um, um, yeah, I, I hope you read it soon, and uh, you let me know at some point. Email me and let me know after you read it. And let me know what you thought about it. Glad you got it. Thank you for letting me know. Appreciate it. Um, okay, cool. So now, for real, everybody, let's look at some art, shall we? <laughs> awesome. All right. So let us line up all the pieces of art here and get the first one into the queue. And for that, what did I start us off with today? And of course, uh, cool. because, you know what, Lee, because even though they, uh, this is before I even knew that as a youngster, you were into the spirit, which is wild to know now. Um, I'm so much happier to be having picked this because I, I thought, you know what? 
I, I was surprised. I didn't, I had, I didn't previously notice this in your, in your gallery. And so suddenly I was like, Whoa, spirit. What? Oh, I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't know he had this. And then I'm like, wow, that's interesting. I, I got to ask him when, when we do the show on Sunday, I was like, I got to ask you about this, but yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about this page. Cause it's, it's killer. It's got, it's got him all over the page. Yeah. And, and supposedly, you know, when I read up about it, cause you always concerned because, you know, sometimes, you know, they had, you know, other artists on the spirit, but apparently sure. um, Will did all the, the figures um, for sure. The spirit figures and possibly the other figures. And then his assistants did the backgrounds, which is cool. And this, this doesn't have like a lot of the, like the really fancy stuff that you get used to um, with, with spirit. Like it's not in the city and it doesn't have the rain and stuff like that, but it is, it's, it's a, um, it's a Will Eisner spirit page. So I was like, I got it from Mitch and you know, he's very reasonable with his pricing and stuff. I bought it. I want to say like probably like three or four years ago. And you know, now I can say at least I've got my, um, my Will Eisner page. I never did. The weird thing is, even though I lived back East most of my life, I never got to meet Will Eisner. He didn't really go to the, um, to the um, um, comic book shows that I went to. I, I told, I like, I know guys that, I knew that to class from him and I never got to meet him. So I was kind of bummed out. I never got to meet him. Uh, uh, Comic Girl Boston's asking, um, is, was it the, the Warren reprints? Those, those introduced yeah. him to Eisner. Yeah, yeah. That's what introduced me to, um, to okay. Eisner and to the spirit. Um, I still have my, my number one issue, I think of, of the spirit from Warren reprints. Um, oh. very yeah, fun. Rick, Rick says that this page <laughs> should win an Eisner award. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice one, Rick. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fabulous. Um, can I ask how long, roughly, you you you've had this? Yeah, I I want to say I, I bought it either three or four years ago from, from oh. Mitch. You know, Mitch. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mitch, I think his name is uh, Graphic Collectibles. I think his yeah, name yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, Mitch Mitchell. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, and Mitch has been a dealer from what I've learned, like for a long time. I think, and he's like I said, he's very fair. Oh, yeah. Since yeah, the seven. You know what? When I saw his booth at SDCC, Marcus, I'd be like, "Wow, these prices are freaking amazing! They're great." And um, but I think at the time I still wasn't working, so I don't think I bought anything. But I thought the prices were really fair at San Diego, you know, compared to other booths. Yeah, yeah, no, it's lovely. Yeah, love it. Very, very, very cool. And given how early you were exposed, um, you know, to to the spirit, uh, how fantastic that you were able to uh, snag yourself a page from it and a great one at that. Yeah, that was very you know? nice. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very cool, man. Um, all right. The second piece we're going to show tonight, I think, is a Batman related one. Let us see this. Yes, sir. Detective Comics number 541 by the wonderful Gene Colan and the aforementioned Bob Smith on the inks. Look at that. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get this from Bob. <laughs> I, uh, I got this from a dealer we all know, and I, I overpaid on it. Um, really? Let me pay it um, over time. So um, I was appreciative of that. Um, but, and you know what? And it's. It, and, and I got this when I was getting back into, you know, when I was starting to work again, I could afford it. So, um, and, and I love Gene Cole and, and I wanted a Batman page by him. So um, I liked, I love that this had the, the bat plane on it. It's got Commissioner Gordon. It's not got a lot of action, but it just, it's got a nice layout. And I like that, that bottom panel is killer, you know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and yes, uh, he was a wonderful man uh, as well. Um, uh, Comrade Boston, does that mean can I can we assume that you had an opportunity to meet him at any point, or perhaps it was just uh, you saw uh, him through videos? I'm assuming you must have met him uh, to know that he was a, a, a wonderful man. Yeah, I um, guess Comic Con Boston got to go to New York Comic Con to see him because I think Gene, those last few years of his life, was hitting those early um, New York Comic Cons. That's I know I saw him once there. Yeah, Rick wants to know uh, if you want. Uh, he'll offer ten bucks for the page. <laughs> I guess he. I guess he figures. You know, he's doubling your money. He. he that's yes. always a great deal, guess, right? Yeah, Rick didn't. I guess Rick didn't hear that. You know, I didn't buy that one from Bob Smith, and that's <laughs> not one. Of, I Bob would never sell the the Batman pages. It was just the Robin pages. <laughs> yeah and you know interestingly enough Kavi, i actually was thinking about you when i was uh when i was creating all the uh slides for lee because uh we got a fair we got a fair number of uh batman pieces to show tonight and uh yeah it made me think of you so 
Uh, I kind of did it for you. Oh, not really, but yeah, you can you can believe that if you want. <laughs> um, let me you see. Know, if uh, you did Gene didn't really do too much. He was on Batman for a few years, but he didn't do a real lot of it. Um, so I, I, I think I've, I think I've got three pages by Gene, and and I've gotten them all kind of recently. So I'm just really happy to have a few pages by him because um, it's you know it's one of my favorite characters, and and it was Gene. So got you, got you. Thank you, Comic Guard Boston, for clearing that up. And Rick loves the Bob Smith inks. Very cool. That's a keeper, Lee. He's telling you. <laughs> and um, I'm sure Lee intends to keep it. And you always like seeing Batman. I know you do. I know you do. Um, just, um, oh, Mark uh, says that that's one amazing runway in the Batcave. No, no, no. you got to remember, it's, it's, a, it's a vertical takeoff and landing type uh, uh, plane. Yes, VTOL as it's known. I know nothing about about <laughs> about aviation, but I do know I do know VTOL. So uh, you don't need a runway for those, Mark. That's funny. Um, yeah, what did I? Uh, yes, let me come back to us. And I wanted to put this up because Marcus, another one that's going over my head. Does anybody else get this? I don't get what I don't know what that means. You either. No. So even even our lovely. Guest tonight, Lee doesn't get it, Marcus. Uh, get a little more specific if you can. We'd like to know now. I mean, we I know who the both gentlemen that you're talking about are, but I don't know what that means. If you didn't make an offer, if you didn't make an offer, people will confuse colon. I, I don't, yeah, man. I don't, I don't, yeah, sorry, don't get it. Um, he has a giant slingshot. Oh, to, 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 to get, I bet you, I bet you there is one of those silver or golden age uh, issues where he takes off by, by using a slingshot. I would not be, uh, would not be surprised about that. Uh, nice. I'd, I'd love a Wonder Woman colon page. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Rick says V2OL is greater than AOL. <laughs> nice. Honestly, a lot of people always say, does AOL still exist? Like people are shocked to hear that they still exist. That's um, my 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 email address is on AOL. <laughs> and, and this is and this is the thing is that I always like I hear people say that, and I'm like, well, a lot of people that are on my mailing list are AOL customers, you know. So to me, it's normal. It just seems like it never went away, you know. Right. But yeah, for some other people, I don't know. Yes, uh, Alberto, Ruben, the confused by Marcus, oftentimes, <laughs> oftentimes. <laughs> Um, so he's saying now, apparently no one made an offer on a Tradmore page for even 50. Oh, where, wow. where and when are you talking yeah, right. about? Though? Like where and when are you talking about? Come on. You can't leave us in suspense with that. It, it couldn't have been, it couldn't have been any time recently. That's for sure. Unless you were talking about some comic con at, at, at inside somebody's <laughs> garage in Timbuktu. I mean, hmm. You know, that's 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 wild, Asperger. Yeah. Ask a lot of people. Ask a lot of people, not just him, believe me. Uh, so, Lee, I love Western pages as well and notice that you also have a great Western art collection. I hope Ruben is showing a page or two tonight. You know, um, to be perfectly honest, I don't remember if I included a Western page. I may have. If I did, it was one, but I may not have. Only because it's always a struggle when I'm the chooser. Um, and again, um, just so you guys know, I did choose tonight. Um, it's always a struggle because I'm always torn between, oh, let me show what I want. But then I think, oh, yeah, but everybody's going to you know, complain. They're gonna, you know, oh, more superheroes or whatever if I'm showing too much like, you know, Western or, you know, non-superheroic stuff. You know, so I, if I have one, it's, it's one. But I don't remember. Um, but anyways. It's, it's a lot of nice stuff. It's a lot of nice stuff, even if I don't have a, 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 a Western included. And, and I'm not sure if you always do it this way, but I, I thought it would be interesting if I just let you pick out what you wanted to show of my collection. Because, you know, oh, that's why yeah, I, didn't, no. I was like, you pick them out. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. Um, typically, like if I had my preference, I prefer that my guests pick because I, I, I guess in my head I think, well, if you're picking – Clearly, I would think that you'd be picking the ones because you, there's something you want to specifically say about them. In other words, there, right? There's certain things about each page that makes you want to show each one of those pages. So that's why I prefer people pick. 
But I don't have a problem picking because that's kind of fun too. It's more work for me, but yeah. obviously it's fun as well, you know. So it makes it, it makes it funner for me, I guess. Uh, yeah, exactly. And 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 again, I should also want to note uh, a note that uh, not only did I pick, um, but as has happened most of the times when I have been the picker, I did not share the picks with Lee. So he, everything tonight that I'm showing, he he doesn't know what I'm going to be showing. But we, I did not share with him. So, so there you go. So it'll be, you know, it's fun that way too because he'll. It's always a surprise to see what I'm what I'm putting up on the screen. You know, yeah. And uh, oh, Comic Guy Boston, I do a good job. To be fair, to be fair, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and um, switching the show to your big screen TV, the art looks more awesome. Hey, that should be really a lot a lot cooler to look at that way, man. For sure uh tj garage con is a must see you can start we can all we i think all of us can probably start one of one of those up except nobody would probably come but you know uh, our, our next door neighbors who don't collect art i guess you know uh jason what's up my friend taking offers is a good way to not get many offers now is that a, that's that's true but now I'm i'm just wondering are you is he talking about is that connected to what marcus was saying about the whole oh oh here it is here it is i skipped over it by mistake it's a story from cgc boards to disparage morris price oh i see okay so all the negativity in the cgc boards started up again this time to put down the prices of trad moore's art i see okay oh but but so you're saying i get that part but is the uh Tying it into Gene Colon, is that just a joke of yours, or did somebody bring up Gene Colon in, in, in that in that message thread? Let me know. Um, yes, okay, so let me, okay, sorry, let me get back, everybody, real quick. Um, oh, Alberto says, I do like the idea of having the host picking up the, picking, picking the pieces. Interesting. Okay, you should let us know why oh, that he follows it up with. If a collector has a grummet page, Ruben will pick it. That is not true. Well, let's, let's see what happens. Let's, let's see what see, happens. Let's see what happens. But honestly, I can tell you guys, and you know, the evidence is there on my channel and all the other episodes for you guys to, to check for yourselves. But I think most of the times when I've seen that, oh, the collector has a grummet page, I've avoided it. Just so people don't say, oh, of course, Ruben's going to pick the Grummet page. <laughs> and I'm not joking. I, I usually do avoid it. Uh, we'll see what happens tonight. Uh, okay. Um, oh, and you said that Westerns pages aren't that popular. No, of course they're not. They, 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 yeah, the Western genre in comics especially hasn't been popular for, what, 50 years or whatever it's been now, you know. Um, I, I love them. But yeah, I, like I said, when you're trying to do a show that has an audience, well, you you know, you try to find the balance, and 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 you know, you know, you guys know. Hey, I've done. Look how many episodes I've done with collectors who collect non-mainstream stuff. You know, I showed. I, I've already had at least three or four episodes of guys whose collections consist of really like esoteric stuff. So that should be every clue you need to know. You know that 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 it's you know if I. If I leave out a random Western page, it's not because I didn't think it was worthy or whatever, you know. So, uh, yeah, there you go. And he says, his grail is a, uh, a Western page. Uh, I'm, I'm no doubt a two-gun kid page that you... Oh, the one that you already got. Right, right. Okay. I still haven't gotten around to... Oh, the, you haven't posted it yet. Okay. Looking forward to seeing you post that one then. And a question. Does that mean that Ruben looks up the published page to make up... To make up the slides. What do you mean? You know how I do them. What do you mean? Uh, of course. I have to. When I'm picking, I mean, it's a lot more work because I got to go through the person's gallery. I probably spend two hours at least because it's it's hard to choose, right? Save them all. That takes time. Then I go online looking for the published versions. Save those pages. Say, right, and then I open them all up in Photoshop, and then I start making the slides. Yeah, I mean, like, whatever, man, it's really time consuming, but uh, yeah, it's fun. So, um, it's a joke since Rick made the 10 buck offer. Ah, I see, I get you from earlier before. Okay, 
and uh, no gene was involved, thankfully. Ah, oh, so you were reading that thread. Were you a comic girl, Boston? Um, no, the, I don't think there's a Perkins page tonight. No. Why are you, uh, there may be. Did I put one? Oh, man. Did I? <laughs> and it's and not, not one that I bought from you either, but there's a, right. good, there's yeah. a good Perkins uh, cover in there. Yes, I don't yeah. know if you picked it. Yes, speaking I, of, I speaking I, of cap covers, there's a good I, I, Yeah, I, I gotta say, I what I said earlier about Grummet, it goes double for Perkins. Like yeah. because I represent him, you know what I mean? Like it's okay if you want to laugh at me, because i occasionally I do pick a Grummet piece if there is one, right? But I usually try to avoid it if I can. Um, but a Perkins piece, I usually try to avoid. Like last week, Neon Dragon, right? John, we had a Perkins piece, but he did the picking. It wasn't me, you know? Um, but yeah, typically I would avoid the Perkins because it's even worse. It's going to be like, oh, well, of course he represents him. He wants to push his artwork, right? Come on, man. You know, Lee, that <laughs> you know that people will think that way, right? Yeah, Come on. I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's it. So I'm like, nah, man, let's just you know, try to play it safe. And you know, there's more more than good enough, you know, cool kick-ass art that I can pick. So, you know, I can, <laughs> I, I can <laughs> claim the Perkins cap cover. There you go. Uh, you should pick someone with just erotic art. Yeah, nah, man. I, 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 I mean, unless it was something that I really loved myself. Like, oh, I don't know. Strips. You know, Chuck Austin strips. Um... Omaha the Cat Dancer. I would love to do an entire episode on Omaha the Cat Dancer. Good idea, actually. I may think about that. Thank you for the uh, for the idea, man. But not not like pinup erotic pinup stuff. Uh, you know, whatever. Like, some of it's okay, other stuff not. I don't know if I want it enough. If I if I'm interested enough to want to do a an entire episode, you know. Um, Alberto, I mean, me to it. You put the original next to the published page on your slide. Yeah. That's right. What do you? I, what's your point? You put the original next to the published page. Right. That's what I've been doing always. Uh, uh, okay. So you looked up. Yeah. 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 How did you think I was doing it? I. Yeah. I. Yeah. It's kind of long. It's a long process. I don't know what else to tell you, but got to do it. I guess. I like it that way. You know, because otherwise the slide is too much empty black space. I can do it without the published version, but then, eh, it would. It would. The visual but would make the uh, the original art seem smaller because the rest of the slide would be filled out with too much black, you know? So, yeah, the slave for the show, yes. The great picker, hey, thank you. Appreciate that, yes. I would love to see pages of Bill Wogan's Katie Keen. See, he's saying that because Carl collects Bill Wogan's Katie Keen art. There you go. Uh, well, Carl, listen, you collect it. We should try to figure out a way where you can come on into the studio with me. I don't mind doing a show that 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 focuses on your collection, even if listen, you and I know, Carl, that we'd get a lot less viewers. But if you don't care, I promise you, I don't care. I just want to do different stuff. Variety is a spice of life. So I'd love to do Katie Keen, especially if you kind of do all the talking, because I'm assuming you you've learned a lot about it, because I would know not much about it. So yeah, man, for sure. Ruben, the reason I think it's best when the host picks is because as a collector, I hate having to pick the pieces myself. You can't pick a favorite child. Yeah, but it's not like one. You've got to pick about 20 of them, you know? Um, yeah, maybe maybe that, Mikhail. Good, good. Uh, that's another um, That's another thing that, uh, yeah, I, I would certainly, yeah, absolutely, I would consider that. Um, if you know one, I can't think of one off the top of my head, at least not that I'm kind of like on good, friendly terms with. Sure, shoot, shoot it my way. Um, yeah, an episode of Dongs Only. <laughs> uh, you know, this this hobby is already quite a sausage fest all on its own. So, you know, I don't know we need to go there. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, I can say that now because Karen's gone, you know. And and, and I, think, I, I think Vivian is, is, I haven't seen her, so she's probably not listening anymore either. Uh, <laughs> find the Cherry Pop-Tart Collector. Yeah, you know, I used to think that was kind of fun. But I would I wouldn't want to do a cherry pop tart show, but I would it, a show of you know kind of erotic type art. I would include a cherry pop tart piece or two. That I have I'd have no problem with that. Um, I wonder if I can ask Chat GPT. I don't, what is that? People keep mentioning that to pick the best twenty pieces of my calf gallery. Is that like AI or something? Yeah. It's AI. Oh, 
Okay. We want Carl. Yeah, Dwayne. Call him out more. Make him feel guilty so he'll do it. Katie Keene is X23 art. Yes. Yes, Marcus. Uh, okay. Let's go to the next piece, everybody. Um, and thank you all for, for the awesome chat. See, that's what I love. I love to show art, but I love to chat in between as well and before and after and whatever. Um, it's a lot of fun. So, all right. Let's check out the next piece. And for that, oh, yeah. This one. I love this. This is so interesting. Check this out, everybody. Scooby Apocalypse. I love the horror genre. And I love the fact that I spotted this in your gallery. I was like, you know what? My eyes, when I when I saw this, I didn't even really notice Scooby and the gang. My eyes went immediately to the frame, you know, the frame that's, you know, made up by all the scary hands and, and whatnot, the creatures um, around the border. I mean, I was like, wow, that's so cool. Look at the inks on that. And, of course, great Tom Palmer work. Um, and then I, my eye ultimately went to the middle and realized, oh, Scooby. You know, so that's that's pretty cool. What made you get the, something like this? Um, I'm I'm kind of a Scooby Doo fan. Um, yeah. One of those early uh, pages that I got um, was at that con I told you about. It was a Scooby Doo cover, and um, I've always I always loved the show when I was a kid. So I, I still I, I want to get a cell somewhere, but they're hard to find apparently. Like the original cells for Scooby Doo. Um, oh yeah. I like the horror um, genre too. So, um, I mean, that's part of the Scooby Doo attraction and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But, you know, this, this, the way this is laid out also kind of reminds you of um, how Joe Kubert used to do like his war covers, like uh, his Sergeant Rock covers, stuff like, right? The, the Nazis were always like, yes. you know, yes. riding and getting ready to kill the losers or whoever it was. Yes. You know? so, <laughs> it's just like that. Yes, Lee, I'm so thrilled that you said that, man, because that's, when I was looking at it, that's the first thing that came to mind. I was like, oh, I, this is like, instead of the, instead of those scary monster hands, it's usually Nazis on, on the Kubert covers. Exactly. It's so amazing. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, Rick also says, like an old Neil Adams House of Mystery cover as well. They did that. Yeah. There's some of those that look like that too. Yeah, a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, so it, it's cool to know that, that you were already a, a Scooby-Doo fan to begin with. Um, Carl says, Scooby-Doo cover, yes! <laughs> so there's some fans out there. Not You're not the only one. You know, it's, it's funny at times like this, um, with pieces like this, I, again, when I said earlier that when I have to pick, I don't like picking because it's a struggle, right? This is one of those pieces. I'm like, oh, God, are people going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, next, go on to the next one, right? But I'm like, I, I love it. It's so beautifully crafted as well. I'm like, I got to show it. I want to show it. And you know what? In the end, I decided, well, since Lee asked me to pick and I'm doing the work, well, then screw everybody else. If they don't like it, tough, tough for them. I'm going to show it anyways, you know? It's, uh, so sometimes I got to do things because I like it and think it'll be cool. Other times I, I defer and I will go and make decisions based on what I think everybody else is going to prefer, you know? So, so there you have it. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a neat one. Uh, Mark Fong reminds us that the cover to Blitzkrieg number one is similar to that. Yeah. Which, that's a cool cover. Did you, yeah. Well, did you pick that one or no? Uh, it's kind of the no. reverse angle. Because that's that is one that's in my I, gallery too, which is I a know. Joe Kubert war cover. So I did get one Joe Kubert war cover, which I love Joe Kubert's war stuff. I thought it was great. I know, but you know what it is? I I, I didn't. I will, I will admit in advance that I didn't. Um, it was essentially what it came down to. Ugh, there's so many. I could have picked a lot of stuff, but I got to limit it, right? I got to limit it. And I'm thinking, okay, well, people are people are already going to be probably like, you know. Not that, you know, some of the people won't be as interested because, you know, the Marvel guys don't really care about DC a lot or if at all. And so I'm like, it's already going to be like probably close to 100% DC related stuff. I'm like, okay, I don't want to then also put war genre and they're going to, you know, uh, they're not going to care because they, okay, they're going to be thinking, well, at least if it's DC, make it superheroes. You know what I mean? Like I said, there's so much thinking that goes into it. You're trying to, you end up psyching yourself out, basically. You know, you're trying to think, well, what are people going to think? What are they going to like? But if I do this or that, what are they going to, you know, are they going to like? Ah, uh, there's just so much, which is why I prefer 
the guest picks anyways, you know, but uh, I'm always willing to do it. I, that's fine, you know. But and, the, but and to clarify, you know, Mark had pointed out that Blitzkrieg number one cover looks like that one, whereas, you know, the what, the cover that I have is not to the number one, but it's it's still a, a Joe Kuber right. Blitzkrieg cover. And stuff. Right. But right. it's actually yeah. like sort of the, that one is actually the reverse, like where you're looking at the Nazis like from the tree where they just shot the uh, – the British uh, yes. paratroopers. So yeah, a little bit different, but it's kind of still similar. He he's very good at that either bird's eye view or you know ant's eye view uh Cuber, yeah. but especially you know peeking out from like behind a destroyed building, you know, with yeah. your guns ready to shoot the, the good guys, you know. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, but Kyle, um I don't know if you know, I would think you know because you're 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 pretty tied into the new comics so that come out uh pretty well. Tons of artists that I've noticed did covers for 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 Scooby Apocalypse, like a lot. Mike Perkins did one himself as well. And uh, at the time, I remember thinking he sent it to me, and I was like, he, he it came in a box with a bunch of covers, you know. And I'm I'm flipping through them, and I'm like, what the hell, Scooby Apocalypse? I'm like, oh okay. I'm like, well, I guess that'll be a tough sell, but I sold it. <laughs> I sold it. So you know something. Jim Lee actually did the interiors to at least the first issue. I don't know how long Jim Lee did Scooby do Apocalypse. Really? But he was, yeah. I mean, they had a, um, a launch party at uh, Golden Apple right in L.A. Um, where Jim was signing the book. So, yeah, I, and I was there. I, I went for that. That was cool. Well, um, Alberto, as you were my guest on the um, State of the Hobby episode a little while back, you know, you did say, you know, we didn't, we chose not to show art. It was just about talking about the hobby. We chose not to show art for that episode specifically because you, you know, had already said you had already been scheduled to do a sort of standard interview on Comic Art Live, which I respected. Um, but you, you may remember, I also told you, even after you do that, if you want to come back, I mean, I do this, again, it's for fun. And I want to do things that are fun with my friends in the hobby. So I don't care if you've been on somebody else's channel or what have you. But if you want to come back and do a show and tell with me, I would love to have you back. I would do it in a second. So let me know. And if you want me to be the picker, I'll be the, I'd rather you pick. But, I, I you know, if, if, if it gets you to come and, and do a, a show and tell, I'll do the picking. Let me know, man, for sure. Uh, agree with CJ that shouldn't overthink these things, whatever. But you got that's that's how I am. It's it's tough. Listen, Lee admitted himself. He, you know, if you or or was it Lee or or, or I don't know, somebody admitted like, oh, if, if I've got a pick, then it'll take too long because you know, oh yeah, it was uh, Alberto, it's yeah, yeah. The, the fact that you know, yeah, exactly. Oh, you can't. It's it's hard to pick exactly. But how do you think I feel? <laughs> I already have enough prepping to do for each episode. And then on top of it, to have to be the chooser, like I said, it's about an average of two hours. Sometimes it's been more, so I guess it's just a lot more time to spend. So I'd rather not be the guy, but like I said, I always ask. And if the guest says, ah, choose, I don't say anything. I just go ahead and choose, you know, so so there we go. So, and yeah, I, I have to overthink. I have to. It's just it's, it's, it's my nature. It's hard. I got me to think about. I got the guest to think about. I got all, all you guys to think about, you know. So, um, I don't know, you just walked into episode two of the Albert and Ruben show. <laughs> uh, well, not yet. He hasn't confirmed. Uh, oh, maybe he has. Hold on. Um, Alberto has new and surprise pieces held back. As long as you do the picking. Well, he's really insistent on it. Let's bore people with more cap art. Um, well, tell me, though. Tell me, though, man. When you, because I haven't seen it. Did you, did you end up showing only cap art on Comic Art Live? Because then that might be a bit redundant. What I would do is I would throw the curveball and be like the guy on the 3-2 count, right? And he's waiting on that fastball. He's just sitting on it. And here comes that breaking curve, right? That's what, that's what I would do. I'd be like, oh, man, I'd be searching. I know it would be tough, but I'd be like, oh, my God, does he even have 20 pieces that are not Captain America related, you know? And, and that's what I would probably end up doing. But if you wanted to do it about Cap, let's do it. But yeah, email me. Let's talk. I'd be happy to do that. He's got that um, Adam Kubert Superman page. Huh? 
<laughs> so he's got that Adam Kubert Superman page. <laughs> you know he's got that one, Lee. And Lee, I'll be sure to put that one on the show just so you can come back and stare at that one and make comments about it. <laughs> That's funny, man. Lee wants to see. Exactly. There you go. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He wants to see the Superman piece. All right. Let us check out the next uh, piece in the collection. And here we got, speaking of Action Comics, speaking of Superman, we have Action Comics 669 in the, uh, as everybody who at least were reading at this time, the pre, uh, pre-death pre era, uh, when Bob McCloud, inker extraordinaire, who is also a very, very good penciler, was doing the art, um, inked by Denny Rodier. And I have to just mention, Lee, before uh, you tell us a little bit about this page, I mean, I love this page. I love the art. I, I'm shocked that it looks to me, I thought when I saw it, I thought it was pure Bob McCloud. I figured definitely pencils and inks, Bob McCloud. And I was like, wow, Rodier, wow. Mind you, it's 1991, so I understand um, he hadn't, uh, Rodier hadn't uh, uh, developed his style quite yet. But very amazing that he inked it to look pretty much exactly like the pencils would have looked like. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. I love it. Yeah, I'm imagining that he was pretty true to the to the pencils on this. Yeah, um, and that's why it looks so much like Bob's. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's nice. Piece. It's just has a, it's the two figures in that big panel are, are, are really nice and just yeah. the overall layout, the the big face, the surprise look. It's almost you know not necessarily Neil Adams ish, but you know how Neil did that with the always with the eyes wide open. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Marcus says that baby got back. Yeah, she yeah, definitely right. does. <laughs> I, I, to tell you the truth, I mean, obviously that, that panel caught my eye first, but then the second one that caught my eye is the second panel. I, yeah. I love the angle it's taken at, the fact that it's like in this tr train yard. I always love to see illustrators put in water towers into the artwork. There's something about the, 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 the metal girders that make up, you know, the supports for the water towers. That's something I just, it just, it's just, Aesthetically eye pleasing, you know, um, yeah. with the, the train so track. Yeah, with the, the infinity line, you have to figure out the stuff to get the perspective, perspective yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Very challenging. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, very, very, very cool. Yeah, the, the, with the, the train tracks as well. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. very, very nice. And we got a uh, got some fans, hunches deluxe. I do have to say, I was surprised that Bob was letting someone else ink him. Well, it's sometimes uh, it's not about letting. It, it's it's more often it's it's a you know oh it's got to be turned in by this much you know by this date and well I don't got time to pencil and ink this one so get somebody to ink it you know um, and yes the third panel is nice Carl says nice yeah that third panel is awesome plus I love pages that have the word balloons in there I miss that so much from modern pages yes yes I think we all do those of us who who also like modern art um, absolutely but. Uh, I can't tell for sure, but I, I might have even bought that off of Bob, like, and when he was selling pages on uh, eBay not too long ago. Oh, really? I think okay. I might have. Yeah, very, I'm, very I'm not exactly sure. I know I bought at least a couple pages from him, and that might be one of them there. Okay. Yeah, it was a good one. Very nice. Yeah, I love I love Bob's uh, run uh, on on the title at that at that time. So it's a really nice page. A good, good, really good example from it. So I was happy to see that. Um. Okay, let us go on to the next one. For this one, we are, of course, sticking in the DC universe, but uh, we're going to jump to a classic. Uh, this is one. This one's for you, Comic Art Boston. I was thinking about you on this one. Um, so, Commandy, number 31, page 10, half splash by Jack the King, Jack Kirby, and ink by the Bruce Berry. Um, yeah, I had to. I had. I, I had to put this one in there. So, uh, yeah, tell me, tell, tell us a little bit about this one, man. Yeah. So this was, you know, that was one of my early goals to get um, a Jack Kirby Commandy page, and I've actually had this page. I got it when I first moved here to California. Um, so I'm going to say I bought it like 12 years ago from um, um, Mike Berkey. Um, so and and at, it's amazing how much uh, how much more page like this costs you know just ten years later, um, but I was so glad I got it at the time. I like the you know even though it's not space, the water is made to you know have that Kirby crackle in it, and that's a nice big yeah that's a nice 
big panel on the top, even if it's just a boat. But we all know Jack liked to draw, you know, m you know, mechanical things anyways, whether it be tanks oh, yeah. or boats or cannons or whatever. And of course, you know, you get Kirby in a couple of uh, panels there, nice close up, and then a, um, a Prince. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember his name, but uh, but yeah, I was very happy with this. It was like, uh, yeah, Prince Tufton. That's what it is. So, um, okay. But it, what was it? Yeah, I think uh, at the time Mike had two different pages, and I was like, I only had it in my budget to buy one because otherwise it would have been great if I bought both of them, obviously. But uh, this one won out, and I think it was just mainly because it had that nice big half page image on the top, and I and it had the Kirby crackle, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I, I mean, I know that, I know that at the top, it's you know, it doesn't contain Commandy and all the other characters. That is my favorite part of the page. I just love the 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 inks uh, on the water um, up there, and of course the the let's call it a boat for simplicity's sake. Um, yeah, I, the whole thing is just just yeah, it's sort of eye popping, and really 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 nice. Um, and I've come to I've come to to um, appreciate the the art. I haven't read it. I haven't read any of it, but I've come. I've really come to appreciate uh, over the last few years. The art from the fourth world stuff a lot more. I never used to pay it any any attention, um, but I've, I've I've paid it more attention over the last few years, taking a closer look at it, and uh, yeah, I, I've come to appreciate it quite a bit. So um, I, I was I was happy to uh, happy to, to to be able to show a, not only a Kirby but a fourth world Kirby. You know, um, yeah. Comic Art Boston is asking. I guess that uh, you first came across Kirby after he crossed over to DC. I guess he mentions because of your age. Uh, yeah. I um, comic of Art Boston, yeah, I, I, I guess I did because um, when I think about it, uh, I, I didn't start collecting comics like the older Marvel stuff until um, I was an adult. So, uh, actually, you know something? No, no, you know what was out at the time when I was first collecting comics? Um, it, that's when Jack came back and did the Captain America, and I liked those comics too. So, I, I, I can't remember exactly what number. I'm sure Alberto knows the number. Um, like when Cap came back, and I want to say it's maybe in the one seventies or something like that. But yeah, I was reading um, Captain America then, or I'd pick up a Captain America book once in a while, and um, so I, I couldn't tell you whether uh, my first exposure to Kirby was um, Commandy or if it was Captain America. It was one of the two. Okay. Uh, cool page. Cool, cool page. Yeah. Um, and I, I um, wanted to actually ask you. Um, Lee, um, did you did you read the 1994 uh, su uh, Superboy series uh, by Carl Kiesel and Tom Grummet primarily? I think I might have read some of them, but I, yeah, I I, okay. I don't I don't think I read the regular series. I, I read them when the, you know when he came into being, of course, with I, with the right. death of Superman and all that stuff. Okay, um, and I yeah. might have like read the first few or something like that, but I didn't oh, okay. like continue. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm only asking because. Later in the run, see, uh, so Kiesel and Grummet had left after you know a couple of years or whatever it was, and um, and then I, I don't remember what the the issues or whatever. But a few years later, Carl Kiesel came up with some more ideas, and he thought, "Oh, I've got some more Superboy ideas," and he got in touch with Tom and says, "Hey, I got these great ideas, all riffing on Kirby's uh, Commandy in particular." would you want to come back on and do it with me? And he was like, oh, hell yeah. And so at, at, at the end of the run, there's this stretch of issues where you look at it, the artwork is still uniquely Grummet. You can tell it's Grummet, but he's doing like a Kirby-ish riff. And the characters, I, I, I haven't read that, that, run, that part of the run. So I, I, haven't still, I still haven't read it. I'm going to, but I still haven't. So I don't know if it's the same characters. It is. Or Oh, so you know that for a fact? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I, I don't know if you saw, but I, I, I picked up a page from the end of that run. Um, yes. I it directly from Keith Champagne. And those characters, because I wasn't sure at first, so what I did was I just went to the um, the DC database, you know, yeah. the, um, the wiki, the DC wiki, yeah, yeah. and I put in the character names, and, yeah, those were from the uh, earlier um, Commandy, apparently. Okay. The same characters in Superboy. So okay. I think that was pretty cool, and that's yeah. and that's kind of why I got that page too. I was like, when I was in front of Keith's uh, um, 
booth. He was at a uh, LA Comic Con. I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm looking. I'm not. Like, I'm like, these look like they're commandy uh, type of uh, characters. And and I think he confirmed that for me at the time when I uh, when I bought it from him. Okay, cool, cool. And I look forward to, to eventually reading it, and getting around to it. Yeah. And um, so Comic Art Boston follows up with, okay, so that explains your love for Cap as well. Probably, you know, I, I guess it's probably due to uh, yeah, Jack Kirby. Because as Al, uh, uh, Alberto says, uh, yeah. yeah, he came back with 193, right? And um, yeah, I believe it was 76. Yeah, and that's when I was 12. So, you know, it's like, that totally okay. makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, mid-70s. I, I, mid-70s for sure, but I do believe it was 76. Uh, Stanley just wants to know, uh, do you frame many pieces? I just have a, a few pieces framed because I don't want to overwhelm my wife with my comic art. So, but she loves, you know, I've got a. Let me oh, wait, 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 wait. Do you not want to overwhelm her or does she not want you overwhelming her? Probably both. <laughs> um, but yeah, of, you know, I have a respect for our space. So, you know, but she's cool. I got a couple of pieces in, um, in the living room and then I got a. And then we got this hallway in between, you know, that just runs down the house where I've, I've got a. A bunch of pages like in there so that's you know that's where i got uh that's where i normally hang that commandy uh cover right there okay that's a that's a um a joe kubert cover which i was so thrilled to have yeah Al uh, alberto's uh, uh clarifying that okay october of 75 so yeah a okay. couple of and months i was 11 so yeah yeah and it was his birth month okay uh january okay cool uh, I think you meant to say January 76, obviously, right? Yeah, 76. Yeah, so cool. Very good. Thanks for dropping the uh, factual knowledge on us. Um, when I hear Grummet, I think of his Titans run. Well, that's the first thing he pretty much did, other than his first few kind of like fill-in issues when he broke in. That was his first regular assignment, so... Uh, especially the wildebeest storyline. Yeah, that's what we call the Titans Hunt storyline. Um, hint, hint, which uh, I may be doing a feature on um, at some point uh, in the near, semi-near future. Um, so you'll definitely have to tune into that. And for the you, you'll have to stay for the duration, Carl, even if your girlfriend wants you to go somewhere. So you'll tell her for that episode, you can't go anywhere. All right? All right, got you. Um, yes, of course. Yeah, I figured. Uh, Mad Bomb was the storyline there at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, ha -ha, I wish I am closer to fifty, to, <laughs> closer to fifty to forty. Still, you're so young, Alberto. Oh my gosh. Uh, still haven't even hit fifty yet. Uh, I wish. All right, all right, guys and gals. Let us check out the next piece. And for that, we are going to do another Batman-related piece for Kavi. Check this out. Um, this is from Batman Beyond. And just a few years ago, and I chose this one because I wanted to say that myself, I was never a fan of Cully Hamner's artwork. Um, no, no, like I can't even tell you why or like with specifics. Um, you know, throughout the 90s, that, that, that whole era when he broke in. Um, yeah, it just wasn't um, a style... That, that, that just grabbed me. But I saw this and I said, wow, this is really different. Like he's evolved his style here from what I remember his art looking like. And I, I love this. So I was like, yeah, I got to show this. I really want to show this piece off. So um, plus it's got great, great Batman Joker and um, and Robin content. So I thought, yeah, I got to show this one, man. Got any uh, any interesting little tidbits to, to tell us about this one, Lee? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I just got this directly from his dealer um, one time when they were having a sale on his stuff. And when they, when they, when he puts a sale on Cully's stuff, it's really affordable. But you know, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, it's got the Joker and it's got Robin. And, you know, and the Joker threatening Robin again, and this time it's his son, right? Um, but just you know, the whole page layout was pretty cool. And I think it's this has to do with a flashback, obviously, because the the book is Batman Beyond. But you know, I like that it was the traditional Batman. Um, yeah. And you know, and again, I'm not even sure. Actually, I'm not even sure which Robin that is. I'm guessing I, it's. Uh, it, it looks uh, to me like Damian Damian yeah. Wayne. It looks yeah. to me like that too, because of the mask, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, actually, well, that too. But no, for me, it was the hairstyle, the haircut. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and the, and the fact that his stature, he looks really kind of tiny. They yeah. still draw Damien very, you know, 12, 13-year-old stature-like, you know? Yep. So that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why. But um, but is there any reason, like, do you know why this particular issue of Batman Beyond, uh, like, it doesn't, like, why is it the regular? It looks like the regular DC Universe no. Batman character. It's, it's one of those books that I have to still track down. Like I could probably buy it on eBay, but then by the time you pay the shipping and stuff, it's like prohibitive. Okay. So it's like one of those books I, I have on like a list of, you know, original comic art that I have that I want to get the book just so I can check out, you know, and you, it's great that you've got the um, the panel next. So I'm not even sure how you find all these panels, but um, yeah, it takes but, time. Uh, it, just, it takes time. It's easy, but it takes time. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, it's like, I would like to read that story. I'd like to find out what, what they were doing. You know, I think yeah. I've read the the summary again on um I use um the DC database a lot just to find out sometimes who the artists were on 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 the pages, you know? And then yeah. I sometimes will include their their summary like in my description on my CAF um page. Too, right. So. Right. Uh, I just want to point out because I like to point out when I see these things when I'm looking at art. Does anybody out there um, in the room, um, any of you guys or gals, uh, when you look at the second to last panel, do, do, do any of you get a, or Yuli, because um, when I looked at that, that extreme close-up of, um, of, of Robin with a gun to his head, I, I immediately thought of Mignola P. Craig Russell art yeah. from the late 80s. Yeah. You so see that? Yeah. They're, yeah, it, it reminds me of the Death of Robin stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. that's one of the things that came to mind too. And I was just like, so it had a little bit of nostalgia attached to it, and you know, yeah. just the content was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting, but yeah, yeah, really, really great content. And like I say, uh, I I don't know anything about Batman Beyond, but I know what the character looks like, and that's not him. So it's really weird when I spotted this page in your gallery to think like. What what's happening? This is is he? I, I actually was gonna ask you. I was gonna email you. I was like, oh, does he mean like another Batman title number twenty five page seventy? He, he just mistakenly wrote Beyond, or, or you know, I thought you'd made a mistake because I was like, no, no, it's really Batman Beyond, yeah. And you know, I, I especially like those two center panels, like where one looks like it's um, just a, a more of a close up with the gun to his head. Um, like in the old, probably in the nineties, what they would have done was that they would have like made a stat, right? They were like, I'm not going to draw this again. Just make a stat of yeah. this one, blow it up, and then put it next to there. But, you know, he drew – he well, he inked all these because I do believe what um, Cully Hamner does is I think he does all of his layouts with his pencils digitally, and then he prints out, you know, blue line, then he inks it. So I think it's all original inks, but it's the only piece of art for that page, obviously, that you – you know, that's down yeah. on paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you as always, Jason. Have a good week yourself. Enjoy. And uh, hopefully see you uh, next week for uh, the episode with uh, Karen. Take care, Jason. And there we go. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool page. Really cool page. So I'm glad, glad to show this. Glad to show this for you again, uh, Kavi. And Marcus agrees you, with you too. Looks like uh, Death in the Family. I always. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I highlighted that to one. Comments. Marcus has lots of witty things to say. I love yes. It. Yeah. Oh, yo, believe me. Uh, you tune into my shows uh, often enough, uh, Lee. Actually, you don't need to. Tune into one or two full episodes. <laughs> you'll, you'll get the full Marcus for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, looks like, oh, sorry. So it looks like the boom is gunshot on Robin. If you read in reverse. It's next to it? Yeah. Maybe because it's next to it, I guess. Yeah. There you go. All right. Okay, cool. From there, we will go um, to the other side of the DC uh, uh, top two, if you will. Well, at least the family. The super family. And we're going with super boy. But no, not Tom Grummet. Okay. <laughs> not Tom Grummet. Uh, we're going to show this cool piece by Joe okay. Staten and Jack Abel from... Oh, uh, adventures! I sorry, I made a I made a mistake and I forgot to like, I copied and pasted the word detective and uh, by mistake. So yes, adventure comics uh, four fifty eight. Everybody, the cover, um, nineteen seventy eight. Very dramatic uh, and really cool uh, light effect. I love that. I love that. 
Yeah, I um, I was lucky again. Uh, Joe, so Joe Staten used to attend those um, um, those uh, same conventions that I talked about, where uh, Bob Smith used to go to. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I forgot Spring Valley. I think was the name of the high school. And you know, uh, you guys are gonna hate me in here, but um, <laughs> so he had this cover, and he had cover to like a a green uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow. And I was like, you know, and I only had so much money on me at the day. I'm like, oh, both these covers are awesome. I don't know which one to pick. He goes, here, take them both. Yeah. For the 50 bucks that I gave him. 50 bucks? For two covers. Sorry, can you remind us all again? When was that? It was like 95, 96. Okay, yeah, wow. Yeah, I was so like, and then I, I like, I stupidly went and, and turned around and and I sold the. I should have held on to the Green Lantern uh, cover, but I I, I I was trying to pay for my hobby too. You know, like I would buy double yeah. stuff and you know turn and flip it so I could continue buying stuff. You know, yeah. and I and yeah. I and this was I didn't even do eBay on this, I, which I probably well maybe I should have. I don't know. I don't even know. But I, I did like a comic buyer's guide. I just put a little ad in the back of it, like that I had this cover, and I don't. It, I think somebody that worked for Comic Buyer's Guide bought it because I hadn't even gotten the issue yet, and somebody had already sent me a check for it. I was like, okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But yeah, this is great. I love I love the um, the light, and I love all those lines that he drew on there. And um, yeah, Jack Abel, you know, he was a uh, you know one of the guys that would do a lot of the inking on uh, on for the longest time, and um, it's just a you know um, it's almost more interesting as a black and white i mean the colors you know not bad oh, good. it's a it's a yeah i i i will give i i i look everybody here knows i'm always the first one to to complain about the coloring but i always also give you know credit where it's due i think in this case this is one of those ex uh, uh exceptions where i think the the they pulled the they use the color to great effect uh, to help that 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 lighting effect on, in particular, beneath uh, Superboy's uh, legs, you know. Yeah. Um, and look, I, I think they they did something different there, as a matter of fact, because it's like the legs are aren't as dark on the printed final as they are in the art. So it's almost as if they reversed it or something. I don't well, know it's a reverse. That's right. It's a negative. It's just the, they they reversed it. That's exactly what they did. Or maybe, you know, yeah, and then they use the color more, yeah, yeah, and then they use the color hold to do that effect on the fading um, red part of the cape. Yeah, yeah, they, they actually, I like, I like that area there, that the way they colored it, it came out pretty good. Yeah, 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 fantastic, absolutely, uh, black and white, almost always better. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, almost always better. Absolutely, well said, CJ. Yeah, so that was fun. I had to, I had to. I had to, I felt like I had to show uh, the Superboy, even if only to fake everybody out and say, okay, everybody, Superboy, and every, have everybody say, grum it, grum it, grum it, grum it. <laughs> I should have waited and been more, more patient, you know. But, but just that, a real nice guy, still doing the uh, the circuits and the cons and stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. Well, hey, uh, God bless the guy. If, if he's uh, healthy enough to continue to doing them, all, all the better for him, you know. Um, okay, so I'm about to go to the next piece, everybody, but I saw a couple of late comments. So, Dwayne, coloring does seem to work better in older pieces compared to what is done today for sure. Mm -hmm. Ruben, the closet color lover. <laughs> I'm a very, I think you could say I'm the, the very open color hater. <laughs> That's more accurate probably, you know. Uh, Maki Pupu says it's a trade-off. 50 bucks went a long way for a lot of stuff back then. That is very, very true. A great point, Maki Poo Poo. That is true. It seems supremely cheap now because, of course, in context, right? But, yeah, if, you, if you're back in 1995, you know, and you put yourself at, at that stage in your life, wherever you were financially, yeah, 50, 50 bucks would have gotten you a lot of really cool stuff in the hobby still. So, yeah, absolutely. Especially if you were still a comic collector. You could have still got pretty cool back issues for that money. So, but still, it wasn't expensive, you know. Um, the low end back then, I guess the best way to put it is the low end back then was affordable to more people at that time than the lower end stuff 
is today, I would say. I, I, I think, maybe not. I mean, it's not a scientific thing that I've done to, to determine that, but I gut instinct feel feel that way. Like I, I, I feel there was more people who would have said, let's say, uh, oh, I can spend 50 bucks at this convention in, in 1995 than there are people today who, um, let's say, are not collecting art, right? They're mostly comic collectors and who go to a con and say, I don't know, what's the average price for a low-end piece? 150 these days, let's say, you can get pages on average for, you know, well, actually, but that's a cover. And you got two covers for that price. So if we're talking about, we got to compare apples to apples, Lee, you would have to say, okay, what would two covers today cost you? Like on the lower end. And again, apples to apples. If we take one one of the cheapest possible Superboy cover we can find and the cheapest possible Green Lantern cover we can find, then you're probably talking at least a couple of grand. That's what I figure, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking there are some cheaper ones I've seen for close to a grand, around a grand, right? So, so yeah, I think there's a lot more people that could have afforded 50 bucks back then than 2000 at the drop of a hat today, you know? I, I wish I was a little more focused with my comic art collecting back then. I would have, you know, if, you know, if I, you know, it's weird because back then it, it, sometimes it did seem like a lot of money that you were spending, you know, but yeah. um, it really, it really was worth it because of what it was, you know, but, um, yeah. but the, but the artists weren't pushing it as much. Like they didn't always bring their art to the shows and stuff like that. They didn't think of it, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, it wasn't there, there. There still wasn't a developed hobby, a secondary market as as of yet, you know, so that's why. Um, and at that time, can you imagine none of us, literally none of us could have ever even in our wild. I know that's in like an old cliche saying, but literally in the wildest possible thing you could have imagined, you would never have thought that it would become to what it became and what it is now, this hobby. Right, like you would right. never have expected it to have, yeah. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. So fun, 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 fun stuff. Cool. Let us move on to the next piece, and with that, we will stick with the super family, but jump forward several decades. Let's take a look at this from Supergirl thirty-one, page twelve. Um, one of the very, um, in my opinion, um, uh, good artist whose work I really like in Eduardo Pansica and um, an inker, Eber Ferreira, who, who I think does spectacularly good stuff as well over some of his uh, fellow Brazilian compatriots. Um, just just a really booming, in-your-face type uh, splash here. And I love the fact that uh, uh, the size, the scale, I love that Superboy just, just makes... Look at, I mean, look at that bicep. <laughs> I mean, look at that arm in general. It's just massive. Um, yeah, just, just, I love the scale here. So, um, and yeah, right, cool action-y page, and I love the inking. Yeah. yeah. What do you got to tell us about this one? Eh? Yeah, so this one, um, yeah, I mean, it's just the image that really captured me. Um, and I, I believe um, this character, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to remember the villain's character. I can't remember, but it was, it had been running through the, um, the Superman family books at the time. Um and um, and I, the inking is is great on this page. And Iber Ferreira um, mostly would be known because he's the guy that inks most of the time over um, Eddie Barrows. And I have quite a few of their pages together. Um, and I think this is just a blue line. So I, I I hardly I didn't really pay much for this. Really, I was just right. you know enamored with the, the how you know the action of the image, and it's just so so powerful and so cool. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, it's 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 a it's a great image. Yeah, I got no problem with uh, uh, inked blue line pencils. So it's it's the finished art, and that's what it looks like. So yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, Alberto says, uh, hmm, not familiar with uh, with Pansica uh, at all, but this page is cool. Yeah, and uh, just so you know, uh, my friend, um, uh, it's been a, it's been a while as far as I can remember, but um, Nikki B. Our buddy Nicky B used to have for a while there. He was he was offering uh, quite a few uh, Pansica pages on his show, but I think at that time you weren't you you still hadn't started tuning in regularly. So um, 
crypto uh crypto crypto oh yeah far in the, in the oh, yeah. he's helping supergirl yeah yeah i love the fact that he's 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 biting on a, a supergirl's cape and yanking her away like that that's kind of cute yeah, i wish i wish that part was a little bit bigger so we could see it better that's 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 a neat neat part of the image as well yeah absolutely man big impact uh, a splash page for sure crack a doom yep I hey. that. that was the crack of doom was on the page too. I always liked those sound effects yeah. on the pages. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's up, Richie? Good evening, sir. Happy Father's Day to you, to the man who I've known for like over two decades, and only a few, uh, a couple of months ago, found out. I thought he was childless, and and then find out he has five kids. Oh my gosh, I'm still reeling over that one, Rich. <laughs> Oh, my God. But good to see you, and absolutely happy Father's Day to you, too, my friend. Um, glad to have you. Like I said last week, it's not a party until uh, until you've arrived. So, uh, yeah, good old Nick. Hopefully he survived his weekend in Las Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so very, very cool piece. And um, now we are going to move to a non-DC piece, one of the 25% of the pieces tonight. From Lee's collection that, um, yeah, I, I just felt like I wanted to do this for me because I think this is such a cool thing. Um, so what I mean by that is the artistic combination, very rare, and both legends, um, one, pieces. one silver, one bronze. <laughs> Typically, the bronze guy doesn't ink other people but he does occasionally this is really cool. things right it's from a horror magazine yes sir yes sir you know what yeah, i'm talking about i was very thrilled to get that page yeah look at this everyone this is so cool so check this out so from creepy number 85 page 18 carmine infantino pencils and walt simons and inks now not only is it like a, a, a rare bizarre combination but Lee, the, the, the ultimate reason why I said, okay, I have to show this one is because it also looks good. Like the, the styles really meshed well together. I just thought like, this is really cool stuff. I love it. I love it. It's just bizarre, but yeah, I love it. It's just cool to me, you know? Yeah, yeah this is a, a ceiling purchase that I was willing to spend more on, but I actually, I did. Considering it's an old creepy page and the two artists that are on there, I thought I, I did pretty good. And, and you know, like you said, that just look at, you know, what uh, Walt put into this. Look at the inking on those top three panels with the snow and all. You know, it's like, it's just he did such a great job. And um, and you can't, you can kind of see Carmine's like faces in there and stuff. But Walt also added, you know, his own style. But it doesn't really look like Walt. You know, so yeah, really kind of interesting. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Carl, yeah, thank you as always. Uh, appreciate you, my friend. Um, aloha and to you, and a big mahalo as always. And uh, yeah, have a have a have a great uh, time uh, at the I guess uh, dinner, and uh, hopefully catch you next week, um, at least for a little while. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, this is um, absolutely amazing. Um, and oh, Rich, sorry, did I say kids? Yeah, sorry, for, uh, grandkids. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, Rich. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, yeah, it, it's amazing. And and uh, sorry, it, it, it uh, so, you, know, you know, sometimes Lee, when you do double duty and you gotta, I gotta listen to, to you and try to read comments at the same time, I, I some, so mm -hmm. sometimes I end up losing. Uh, did you, did you mention when or how you got it? Yeah, um, it was a. I'm pretty sure it was a, a comic link. So it's ah, okay. It was. Okay. It's pretty recent. I just added it. I, I only got it like a, I want to say like two months ago or so. Oh wow, that's really recent. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic, man. Yeah, good. And um, you don't have to say obviously numbers, but um, did did you happen to mention? And if you didn't, would you mention? Um, did you feel it was something that was uh, pretty cheap, affordable? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, it was under a thousand. So I thought for okay. a piece like the, for these guys, that's that's a good price. You know, so. that's pretty affordable. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Yeah, taxes and everything and fees. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, Rick. Yeah, str a strange brew, but tasty. Exactly. Well put. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice page. They really combined well. Yeah, that's what I liked about it mostly. It was like, wow, it's weird, but a weird combo, but uh, they fit well together. So, um, all right, CJ, you got to go too. Ex excellent. I'm, I'm, gla I'm glad that means that your daughter has probably arrived. So um, happy Father's Day again, my friend. And um, yeah, have a great rest of the week. And uh, we'll see you next week, bud. Thanks, CJ. Thanks for participating. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So very, 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 yeah. Just a, a really neat page. So very happy that you got it. And by the way, also got to mention, I love that you all, it, it, it also comes with the bonus of um, the classic and, and beautifully done um, Walt Simonson dinosaur signature. Yeah. At the bottom, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, really, really nice. So very, very cool. Very cool. Okay. From Creepy, I'm not even sure what the next one is because uh, for all of you... Austin, I just want to say goodbye to him too in case he's like clicking off already. Thanks oh, for did he, did he click off? Uh, commentary, yeah. Oh, okay. Let me get to that. Okay, I missed that. Okay, hold on. Very sorry, but need to check out to take care of something. I will catch the rest of the show on Rewind. Ruben and Lee, many thanks once again. Well, many thanks to you as always, uh, Comic Car Boston. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. And I want to answer uh, Stanley's question too. He asked if yeah, he I don't, for yeah, don't worry, yeah. don't worry. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna. I was waiting for my op kind of a, an opportunity as well because. Um, hold on, before we get to it, uh, give me a second here. I thought. Ah, uh, collect. For, okay, see, that's what I was wondering because I, I saw the other one he he did just a few minutes back. And Stanley, I did not forget it. It's just I was waiting for a good opening for it. So I'll do that one. The first one you did was, okay, so Lee seems from different eras. Does he collect for nostalgia? And before you answer that, Lee, let's just put the other one. Does Lee collect for nostalgia or have a favorite time period? Okay, similar question. So. I think um, I think like most collectors that, you know, nostalgia definitely plays into it a little bit. I mean, there's certain artists that were um, – like, you know, one of my, I'm a huge uh, Kirby fan, but also um, I'm a really huge Neil Adams fan. Now, I don't have so much Neil Adams in my gallery because, it, it, again, it, it's expensive, you know? Yeah. Uh, but sure. I was able to buy some from um, when the family would do their, their shows um, on, um, I think, Facebook. They used to broadcast them on Facebook, and they'd have claim shows and stuff like that. So I was very happy to pick up uh, – I would say, well, yeah, just I think just one from there, but it was a, a nice piece. I was very happy to get it. But um, yeah, so I guess you know, nostalgia plays a lot into it. But I, but I'm looking at the pieces as a piece of art itself, and you know, the, the character sometimes is important, but sometimes it's it's just um, you know, what is this piece about? What's what's being said in it? Is it, is it a good storytelling page? Um, is it explosive like the Superboy, you know, that nice uh, splash you, had, you showed before? Um, so, yeah, different things catch my eye. And, you know, um, I can't say it's any, like, one thing that I can attribute it to. Je like, it's definitely not just nostalgia. And it's, you know, and, um, you know, and some of it's budget, too. Like, I, I still try to maintain um, a certain budget. Like, you know, if I had, uh, you know, tons of money, then, yeah, I'd buy. Sure. It's by some really nice pieces of art, but I don't. Yeah, know. I mean, you're not, you're not very different from a lot of collectors in terms of right. how you answered that question, you know. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a series of things, a lot of things that go into it, right? So, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and with that, let us go to the next piece, which I adored. And yes, I don't know if you're still here, Kavi, but. <laughs> Uh, I think you would love this one. I absolutely thought this was smashing, as the Brits love to say. Um, I mean, okay, I will say one thing uh, as a point of interest, kind of similar to what I, I had mentioned earlier uh, on one of the previous pages, where, so here we got Mike Bear penciling, Gray Morrow inking, and I'm a fan of both artists, and yet for this, I was like, wow. I wonder if... If, if I checked up the credits of this issue, is Bear credited perhaps with breakdowns? Because I see, I see nothing but Gray Morrow, and I actually thought it was Gray Morrow pencils and inks. 
Um, not that it matters. It, it, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. I just thought it was very interesting. But I just – I love Bray Morrow and – Man, and to see those, wow, those phenomenal at the top series of panels. You get the classic, you know, flipping of the coin, another panel of it landing in the hand, and then that gorgeous, gorgeous close up of the face, and then all that action in the middle tier. I mean, the whole thing spectacularly. Holy crap. You landed an amazing one on this. Yeah, it's. I thought I got really lucky. Um, it was a, this is actually a dueling dealers, and there really wasn't that much competition. And this is a, a Really? One of, two, of two consecutive pages, yeah, that I got Whoa. from Anthony. And I wound up waiting till the end of the show and just made an offer and he and he took it. But um yeah, um I like the fact that it's you know, Gray Morrow, you know, I don't know how many of the people that are in you know in the comments uh, section know of him. I mean, you know, he, he's a oh. I, I bought a, a really nice um splash from you once. I mean, that's one of our first introductions, I think. Um the spider, right? You remember that you sold that to me way back when? Yeah, yeah the, spy, the spider splash. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but this combines like, yeah, I agree. This looks more like Gray Morrow. Looks like Gray Morrow did everything on this, right? Yeah, um, yeah. He was old school. Well, well, I mean, they still have a lot of detail in this. You know, you're looking at the the shingles and the bricks and stuff like that. You know, and um, but then a lot of the tone, of course, is done with the um, um, what is that the um, Geez, I forgot the name of it right now. You know, the, the, well, they just lay down the uh, the sticker essentially. Um, uh, sorry, it's either stickers or sometimes it's painted. Um, I can't remember. Oh, you mean Zipitone? You mean? Yeah, the, yeah Zipitone. Zip That's what I'm trying to think of. Oh, yeah, a lot sorry, of this yeah, is Zipitone. Yeah. yeah, a lot of this is Zipitone, but yeah. I can't remember. And which is kind of, and actually, all all those tone areas might be Zipitone. There's a lot of it on this, and. Obviously, you don't get that anymore. That's more of like a a seventies, eighties type of a tool, and in nineties, I guess too. They use it in the nineties too, but you, yeah, after yeah, that, yeah. you don't really see it. You know, they they did more of that in in the color process. Um, but you know, also you you can look at the reproduction, and that just shows you how cheap the comics were back then. Look at how how the crap paper was put on, where it's the image on the back of the page is bleeding through, and everything's all murky. <laughs> I know um, <laughs> Neil Adams used to get so pissed off at the production, the, how poor the production values were of his pieces. I know I, I, I brought um, some poster um, pages once to have him sign. He was just like, look at the quality. It's terrible. You should have seen the original. I was like, but yeah, yeah this, this proves the point. Look how much nicer the art is than the, the final printed piece, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Rick's pointing out he did some nice work on the, the Tarzan Sundays during the 80s as well. Yeah, very nice. I mean, I always like this stuff. I mean, I really enjoyed that two-issue, double-sized issue, uh, lowest lane miniseries he did in the mid-80s. Um, I mean, some of his 70s stuff on Man-Thing. I mean, yeah, I always loved this stuff. It was beautiful, beautiful work. And yeah, the content here is fantastic. Like, if you're a Batman fan, to have... Yeah. One of his greatest villains, you know, plus that, you know, Robin and whatnot. Oh, man, with great imagery. Yeah. Oh, it's it's really, really fantastic. Yeah, with the coin and everything. and Yeah, and exactly. And that's, yeah. yeah. Point, you know, that's what I point out. That was the first thing I wanted to point out was the fact that he's not only there, but he's, you know, you got two panels of him doing the flip and the landing in the hand, right, and showing it like a... Yeah, it's it's right, it, and that close up is pretty awesome too. That's and the close up—that's why I, I pointed that one out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's spectacular. The whole thing, really, really dug this page. I was like, okay, this was a no brainer for me, you know. So there, there's uh, a lot of panels on that page. Count the panels. One, two. I know, three, I know, I know. I know it's ten. ten panels on that. Ten, yeah, yeah, and yet it's still nice and clear. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good. Good storytelling. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you were uh, just waking up, awake enough to uh, to, ch to to see it, uh, Kavi. Uh, maybe maybe it was me uh, shouting out your name that woke you as you were drifting away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's uh, that's yeah, amazing. Really love it. And um, everybody, before we hit the next piece of art, just quickly want to do my usual, uh, letting you know to uh, to remember that this past Friday there was no show on the EXP with Nikki B. Um, but, um, he is back this week. Um, so he and Amy and I assume either Jay or Kyle on production and the rest of us who hang out there will be there as always. And, um, here actually I can put, the. 
I think, I, I hope this works, but uh, I just put a link in and I believe for anybody uh, who isn't subscribed, you can click that. I believe that should take you directly because it's sometimes it's, man, and it, Marcus knows, it's hard to find his, his actual show sometimes. So that should be the direct link to the actual show, not just the homepage of the channel. Um, so yeah, so check that out and we'll see what he has to, uh, to sell us this week on Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern and 4 o'clock Pacific as always. All right, so from there, the next piece in the Kick-Ass Lee collection is this piece. From here, we're going to go from the one teen of Superboy earlier to the other teen, the original Robin. And for here, we got a very... What I loved about this piece is I figured I'd show everybody something with a famous character but a very obscure artist. So I don't know people would appreciate this because he's not very well known but um so this one is <laughs> done by uh this guy named thomas v grummet and uh inked by ray Crissing. um and yeah i love i love robin why not and uh i don't know again like i said i don't know i'm not too familiar with the artwork but i, I liked it i thought i better get grab an example of this guy in case he makes it big in the industry you know <laughs> that's fine Talk to me, Lee. Talk to me. What do you got to say about this? So you, didn't, you didn't surprise anybody. Like I know, I know. After all. But yeah, uh, and, th and this is from a really great storyline too, Pro Prodigal. Um, I, I like um, a Prodigal. I forget how you say that. Yeah, Prodigal. Prodigal. Like the Prodigal oh, Son yeah. Returns. You know? Yeah. And um, But yeah, I, I thought it was really cool that they had a... Uh, um, oh, so this... Let me see. Was it, That wasn't Dick. This, this was... Um, is this, that's not Dick, right? That's isn't that supposed to be uh, a Tim? No, no, no. Yeah, that's uh, what's his face. The second one. What was uh, yes. I, I always Tim, uh, right? Tim, Tim, Tim Drake. Yeah, Tim Drake. Yeah. Yeah. I always, I always forget that. Uh, yeah, Jason Todd was the guy who got killed by the one nine hundred number, and uh, so the third one. this is really the third one. Yeah. Right. right. So Tim Drake. Yeah. So that's the third one. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And yeah. um, I, I like that that he's you know in in the cover twice, and it's supposed to be sort of like a ghosted back, it sort of ghosted back. I don't know. It looks pretty solid there, though, doesn't it? But the black on there, I remember it. It is like it's got some kind of tint underneath it. Um, they yeah, they did an overlay for that. It's a this this yeah. has a lot of different pieces. The original art for this, it's got like an overlay. It's got you know you can see the corrections on it and stuff like that. It's a little sloppy as far as artwork goes, but you know yeah. what? It, it 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 made a really nice cover. You know, yeah. and I like the process anyways. I like um, seeing what the process was, you know, like yeah. figuring it out. Cause I used to be in pre-press myself and I'm like looking at this overlay. I'm like, okay, this is the overlay they used where they just, they, they did a, um, a positive acetate of Robin himself. And then they put a tint underneath it. Um, it is a little harder to see on your, your color image there, but it, it is a, it's a tint, it's tinted back. So, right. You know? um, yeah. Yeah, and it's got a lot of action on it. It's a cover, you know. You got to love yeah, covers yeah, yeah. in the '90s, you know. No, it's 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 uh, it's exciting. I I like it. I mean, I'm assuming you haven't forgotten that you reached out to me to ask me about this, yeah, right. right? Before yeah, you bought it, that. right? And I I had to be honest with you and, and and tell you about how it's constructed and put together, yeah. And that that was part of the reason why it. You know, it had been available and, and right. And otherwise it would have been in my collection. I, I was, gotcha. I couldn't pull the, yep. pull the trigger because I kept thinking like, I just couldn't see it well enough. And I was nervous. I knew there was multiple layers and I was like, yeah, like it looks like I can live with it, but what if I get it and then I don't like it? And then, oh, now it's up to me to, have, you know what I mean? Oh, I got to try to sell it, you know? So I was like, whatever. But I got to tell you, I never, I never told you this after the fact. But um, or at least I don't think I did. But after we spoke about it, I was really happy that because I, I didn't want I wanted to be honest with you, but without trying to influence your own judgment and opinion. Right. I still I still wanted you to like, you know, take it for what it is, understand mm -hmm. what it is. And make your 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 make your 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 decision. You know, I didn't want to just completely blow it off or whatever, just because it wasn't done the usual standard way. And I was so happy to see when you popped it in your gallery. 
I was like, wow. Oh, okay. I'm happy. He, he, he's cool with it. He understands. And, and like I said, I just wanted to protect you from receiving something in the mail that you would be like, holy crap, what's this? Because you, like, imagine if you didn't really get it, you would have freaked. You would have flipped out if you would have seen something like that, you know, without knowing, like. Yeah. But I got to tell you something. Yeah. The guy actually delivered this to me. So I had the opportunity. Oh, and hey. No, I don't want it when he brought it to me. Yeah. In in person. Wow. Yeah, because he he felt he, he didn't like shipping stuff that much, and he wasn't that far away. He was like maybe a half hour away. So it wound up working out pretty good that way, and I didn't have to pay for shipping and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, so I got to look at it, and I could have turned it down if, if I didn't okay. want it. I just thought Fantastic. it was a fair price for a 90s cover, and yeah. um, and I didn't have a Tom Grummet cover. So, uh, you know, I kind of wanted it. It was still Robin. I'm a big Batman fan. Yeah. And I like Robin. I got quite a bit of Robin stuff too, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, listen, listen, listen. I, I just, just – you know, for a point of interest, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention to anybody what you paid for it, but for your own sort of knowledge, I mean, I was talking with a friend about this cover not that long ago, and um, you know, we were kind of realizing like, wow, you know, it, it, the last cover that I remember selling, at least publicly, sold for thirty five hundred. But even that was already probably three years ago. You know, the Robin covers do not come up. So I don't know what what a, a, another one would sell for if it came up today, you know. Um, but if you can imagine, let's say it was even higher than 35, which I wouldn't be shocked at all. That just makes what you paid on yours. Oh, it, it bumps that up a little bit as well. You know what I mean? So... And you, and you know, the reasons for my sending you emails was actually because I was considering bundling that up with a trade for something that Anthony had, but Anthony wound up not being interested in trading the piece that he had anyways. Like he had like this, yeah, he had this uh, really great, um, what was it? A, um, oh, I think it was a world's finest page of the Super Sons um, from the 70s, which I remembered. And it was, you know, it was um I'm trying to remember the artist's name. I can't off the top of my head right now. But one of the things that was I remembered as a kid, and yeah. I was like putting together a bunch of pages to say, Anthony, how about if I just trade you all this art for that one cover? And he he was just like, no, it has to be something really special. And so I couldn't get him to – like yeah. I, I put together a lot of stuff, and that just happened to be – and that's why I was kind of asking you, like what would you – how what kind of number would you put on there? Yeah. Because um, it was just to see like what I could – like what I could try to do in trade, but yeah, and right. I think pretty much want to either cash or something really again spectacular um, okay. as far as a trade for the for the cover that he had. Okay, so. okay, well, that's fine. Whatever it, it you tried, and you know, like I said, I'm I'm happy to have you know helped out and got you because yeah. it was cool because then when you reply back to me, you know, you were like, okay, got it, great. That's I got I got what I wanted to know, so I was happy. Okay. Because I respect your knowledge, and um, especially on this artist, because I knew that you were the person to go to to ask about it and, and such. So I was like, okay, let me just ask. Yeah. Let's go to the yeah, source. No, yeah. well, I'm always happy to help. Yeah, whether it's Tom or whoever, anybody wants, if they think I can help them, I'm, I'm always open to that. You know, so so I'm very happy to do so. Okay. Great. So cool story, cool art, followed by a cool story. And um, Alberto, you will not be getting any Grummet covers. Stay away, please. Thank you. Um, <laughs> or at least I, I, at least wait until I tell you that you have my blessing. How about that? <laughs> um, um, I don't know. Oh, Rick is asking. Well, I, you he might be talking story? about maybe this one right here, this uh, – this is a Dick Dillon page right here that I just got recently. Oh. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Okay. Well, yeah, we don't know, Rick. Let us know. Uh, Ruben the Grummet Guru. <laughs> the Grummet fan is good enough for me. I love him. Um, oh, oh, look at that. You little bastard. <laughs> now you want one even more. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, well, as I always tell everybody, you know, it's a free for all. May the largest bid win, I guess. I can't stop you from bidding if you want one, uh, you know. So, 
the 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 world is your oyster i guess um oh rick is talking about anthony's trade oh oh okay um trade the pay, uh, uh, world's finest i'm like i am like spazzing out right now as far as uh, the artist because it's 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 the artist that he did a lot of the superman covers and oh he did that cover that i want i can't even remember his name uh italian he uh, he, he he did a lot of super co man covers in what era? In the seventy in the early seventies in the. Uh, um, so rich rich uh, Garcia Lopez, no, rich, that's later. Rich, that's later. rich Buckler. Um. Okay, that's later. Oh, so early I'm just, I'm just right now. I, I can't think. Yeah. No lie. Uh, Bob Oxner, Marcus says. No. No. Come on, this is good. This is like part of a game now, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyways, if it comes, someone will come up with it. Someone will come up with it. I'll, I'll remember, it. remember finally. Uh, it'll come out of my dusty old head eventually. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the meantime, we'll show some more art. Then the next piece is actually so interesting because uh, a couple of weeks back we had a show and tell uh, with Dwayne Murray, and he showed a page from this book. Uh, well, not this issue, but this this title. Um, so Green Arrow, number five, page 17 by Phil Hester and Andy Parks, but a splash page with uh, the Canary. And I'm assuming, I'm assuming uh, Speedy, right? Yeah, I think he was calling himself Arsenal at the time. He was already Arsenal by then. Yes, yes. Okay. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's a nice looking uh, page uh, by Phil. You know, and Phil's a huge comic art um, fan too. Yes, he collects. He collects a lot himself. But I, I, you know, I really, I actually got this um, in a in a group of probably like four pages or something like that. Um, oh yeah, um, okay, Marcus, you're right. It's Nick Cardi. That's who I was trying to think of, and that's ah. why I couldn't think of. I just for some reason, I couldn't remember his name. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so uh, let's get back to this uh, Phil Hester um, page. I actually got this page from Kevin Smith's collection. So this is from, um, you know, when this, uh, Kevin Smith was writing that storyline of the Green Arrow when he came yep. back to life. This is after yep. he had uh, been killed. I can't remember which book he was killed. I, I think his old series, and then they started a new Green Arrow series, and this is part of uh, him, uh, you know, essentially uh, when he came back. Yes. Actually, uh, interesting that you say that uh, because, as I already mentioned, um Dwayne Murray uh, a couple of weeks ago who was my in studio guest he had so his page was the last page splash from the first issue and it was the so the first return of Green Arrow and he's wearing you know he's, he's got the thick beard long long beard yeah um, yeah and he said the same thing as you that he also he got it uh, from Kevin Smith um I guess he was selling them and he I think he had mentioned that it was in a very nondescript way. Like not a lot of people seem to know about it or something. I guess not. Cause I got a whole bunch of stuff from that show. Um, you know what it was? It was, it was an auction that took place in Pasadena. It was okay. right up the street from where I lived. So I wow. went to the auction. It was at the Pasadena convention center. Um, they, uh, I think it was, maybe it was prop store, but it was one of these um, prop houses that was actually selling um, the comic art because the comic art wasn't the focus. The focus was Kevin's um, props from his movies. Oh, so They okay. had set up like a museum. This, you know, the auction took place and all of the, um, the auction pieces were around the room. Um, and a lot of it were costumes from all his different movies and stuff like that. But then he had a handful of original comic art pages from the, you know, the Daredevil series that he did with uh, Caseta. And yeah. those got a pretty good price. And I, I wish I had realized how expensive Caseta's, Joe Caseta's art is. I would have bid on those. Uh, but again, it was Daredevil and I didn't really have an interest in Daredevil. I'm a DC yeah. guy. So I wound up getting, um, I think I bought like like four or five lots from this. I was like the top buyer and I was in the room, uh, but you we were competing against people that were on the internet too and on the phone too. So they had mm -hmm. the internet and the phone going, but yeah, it was one of those auctions that, you know, it wasn't heritage, you know, yeah, so it right. wasn't this widely. Um, and it was also like 2011. So it was already 12 years ago too. So um, yeah, I got some pretty great pieces there. And one of them was a, um, a, a Matt Wagner cover that I got that they use for the, oh, the Green Arrow. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's right. in my collection still too. I kept a few of them, but I've sold a few different one. Um, Jordan from Hawaii bought one of the pages, which was pretty cool. Done the way it was done too. And you know, Phil put a lot. Uh, well, actually, Andy put a lot of work into that too. You you see, he used a lot of the splashing, like for the stars of the the whiteout and stuff like that on that page. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. Beautiful. Look at like you know, the Milky Way and the stars. Yeah, the Milky stuff. Way stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Gorgeous. and the way he did it, the smoke looks really great too. He, uh, Andy Parks did it, just a really great job on this. I I want to get this signed someday by those two guys, but they never do shows. I mean, nobody's asking Phil, unfortunately, to come <laughs> and do a show like in San Diego, which I don't understand because now he's, you know, he just did. He just came off. I I don't know if he's still doing um, Justice League, but I know he did Justice League for a good portion recently, and he also did that mini series. Um, on the Gotham, which is um, oh. pretty good. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he, I, from from I mean, from what I remember, I, I I don't like when I hear his name, I don't really think of him as a name that I ever really sort of see on guest lists for conventions, you know. So he he's probably very very scarcely at them, if ever, right? The, he was just fe like one of the articles on the calf you know, daily um, emails that comes uh, it featured him. He was at a local one because I think he's in Idaho and he was at a local con, you know? So, um, and that's who's asking him. To, he's getting asked to go to local places and that's it, unfortunately. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think Marcus, I think you're right. Um, that um, I, I think that Kevin needed money for, might, yeah. um, I think it was red state. Actually. I think he was, he was putting money together for that movie Red State because maybe he had to finance it himself, which is a pretty weird movie. Like if you, you know, you you used to what Kevin Smith's movies are like, and then all of a sudden she Red State and it like smacks you upside the head, and you're like, "Whoa, what the hell was that about?" That scared the shit out of me. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, my language. I don't know if anybody swears. No, I don't know. It's okay. It's a, it's a, it's for adults only. Um, uh, I mean, and I'm not joking. There's a there's a thing on YouTube that asks you. Uh, on the channel is this content for children and i always mark no <laughs> so you're good to go um good night uh Arrecto, if you're still there and uh if you're still there by any chance email me let me know if you want to do a show and tell I'm, i'd be I'd, I'd love to do it with you for sure so let me know um happy father's day to you again uh <laughs> you little bastard <laughs> <laughs> says he likes horror stuff, so he might even know I do, what this is. I do love horror stuff. Do, do you know what this is? The Phantom? You mean the Phantom of the Opera? It's sort of like Phantom of the Opera. It's a little bit different. Though. It's from the seventies. I don't know what that is. Then Phantom of the Paradise. It's called. I've never heard of that. That's horror. But but I, and I wore it because look at they did they they did they, they essentially took the um the Batman logo and they and they made. Well, no, that I noticed obviously. It's sort of, it's yeah it's sort of horror it's a uh, um I'm trying to remember the um the director it's it's one of those famous directors um oh. he hasn't been doing much lately um but is it is but, it a movie what is it a film yeah, it's, a movie. it's a movie oh yeah oh okay okay and anybody else ever hear of it it's just called what is it called Phantom what Phantom of the Paradise Phantom of the Paradise I mean it just sounds weird is it one of those like really cult low budget type movies. Not, I don't think it's really a very low budget film, but it is definitely a cult film. It's a okay. cult film, but uh, um, I'm trying to remember. Anybody else it. hear about it? Let me know because, okay, Brian De Palma, Marcus is saying. Brian De Palma, here you go, Marcus. Good job. I think I'm not sure if he's like uh, going like right to IMDb or whatever, but yep, it's Brian De Palma. Yeah, okay. it is a rock. Yeah, Mark, it's a rock opera for sure. Oh, it's, it's a rock. Movie. Okay, that's different. Yeah, if you if you would say that's that. Also that's it's got blood in it. It's the Palma. The Palma likes blood, you know. Okay. okay. The, remember, the Palma did carry and a whole bunch of other stuff. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. Ruben the Palma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these guys, they, 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 they never let up, as you can see now. You know. Uh, all right. Let us go on the to the piece of art. Um. What is next? What is next? Uh, ah. So here we go with uh, one more uh, Batman piece. Maybe Kavi. We'll see if Kavi still uh, hasn't fallen asleep. So Batman Confidential number 51, page 3 by Jerry Bingham. Um, I just want to say real quickly, I love these pages because I always thought 
how cool is it that he spent all this time doing kind of like, you know, the, the, the top scene mirrors the bottom scene. He does like painted work on one half and leaves the rest of it uh, black and white. It's just really cool. I love that. Yeah, I think there's there's been a couple of them on Heritage recently. Um, I got yes. this directly from Jerry. And you know what? He just said he made the decision to do the painted thing. Like, that wasn't even part of the job. He just said, I felt like I wanted to do this. I wanted to practice my painting. Um, and they didn't pay him any more for it. He still got painted, uh, paid just for, like, you know, single color work. Um, but I was like, wow. And, and I... I can't remember if he had to cover. I probably wasn't going to be able to afford it anyways, but I was just like, and he did work with me a little bit. He actually, I think he lowered the price a little bit when I bought it from him. But um, I just grabbed the, you know, I thought it was great. The, the bottom panel has the logo on it and just, you know, how the action um, in the in the the black and white, you know, reflects what's going on above it in the, in the painted scene. And that is Bruce. I mean, that's that's Bruce Wayne on the right and on the top panel too. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read it and figured that out. Yeah, I think that that reproduction's horrible though. That like when I'm looking oh, yeah. at the color, I'm like, oh, look yeah. at all the detail I got lost in that middle panel. That's terrible. Oh no, it's horrible. Yeah, I know. It's just yeah. I didn't want to bring it up because I, I I'm I'm known for constantly bringing up you know how how much I hate co the the printed coloring whatever. But but this yep, is yep. The, this is I, I want to say late '90s, right? I think this is late '90s. Uh, maybe, maybe early 2000s. 2010. No. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's. Wow, that's that's terrible color for 2010. Yeah. Well, I mean, those bottom two panels have what I would call typical computer fill colors. Like it's just you just yeah. hit the one button to choose the color, and oh, fill, and there you go. Oh, the background's filled with that one color. Like it's, yeah, it's just horrific. Uh, and then I Batman, mean, Batman himself. Look at this tape. detail in the top panel got lost a little bit, like on Bruce. Like you lose a lot of detail there. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, for sure, when it's printing, it, it you're yeah. always gonna lose, you know. You get the game, but, yeah. You get the document. Yeah. But um, yeah. But I still would say that the top published better than the bottom. I mean, it's just those colors. It those, it's just yeah. horrible at the bottom. Yeah, right. What is that? Ugh. And that's computer color. So, like, how can you do those wrong? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know but, but 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 even if you look at Batman's cape, look at his cape. Look how cheesy that is. The coloring, like, yeah. oh, like, like you could see. You could see the exact line of, of where he, you know, the, whoever it was filled, okay, this color, we'll put a strip of this version of blue. Yeah. And then next to that, the different version of blue. Like, it's so, it's so crap. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's such a shame, too, because like I said, Jerry went and threw in the, the watercolor top panel for nothing yeah. because they didn't pay him for color work. And then they did such a crappy job coloring it digitally. It's like, that's a shame. Yeah, Dwayne's a pain. Exactly. He's making it look like it's like we're watching a cartoon. Like, it's just so bad. Well, uh, whatever. Anyways, it, we all know this. It's usually very bad. Whatever. I don't want to get it's into that. Another one of those cases that the, the original art far outshines the final product. <laughs> no interest, Stanley. No interest whatsoever. Uh, they already have enough professionals who should know what they're doing. And I don't know why they don't, but whatever. It's not my business. I don't want to. I don't want to get into that. But uh, okay, this next page, everybody. Super, super, super killer. This was for me, not not for anybody else. I just love. Okay, there's a pencil and an inker coming up, um, and uh, all due respect, uh, uh, he, he he's he's a buddy. I like the penciler, but this is this is all about the inker. So check this out. Superman Day of Doom. Oh, sorry, I screwed up and forgot to copy it and paste it and forgot to change the letter, the, the, the artists, everybody. But this is Dan Jurgens pencil and Bill Sienkiewicz, obviously, on the inks. And, oh, spectacular. The, to me, this is all about technique. It's just, it's, it's yeah. balled out technique, nothing else. That's, that's all that matters here. You just You want to see Sienkiewicz go crazy with the pen? That's it right there. Beautiful. I don't even care who the characters are. You know, this is just just spectacular Sienkiewicz technique. Beautiful. Love this. Those two bottom panels are, like, amazing with all the – like you said, all yeah. the pen work he did on the face of the prankster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you get a little Doomsday cameo too. Yeah, which is kind of cool. I got Doomsday. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's fun, you know. But, um, yeah, no, beautiful. I, 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 I was just like, okay, this I got to show. And I'm really pissed off at myself for screwing up on the – 
artist credits, but at least since this stays up on YouTube permanently, uh, people watching, uh, if they put as long as they have the audio on, they will hear me say what I've already said. And yeah, that makes us talk about it more, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, and, and I got this directly from Dan Jerkins, and Dan's pretty. He really underprices his art when he sells it, but um, you I think was very yeah, right. Really? Oh, yeah. No, no, really. I, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm not. When you, when you see him in person, or at least he used to. I mean, I bought this page. It's got to be like I want to say like seven, maybe even eight years ago now. So okay. you know, it's probably he's probably adjusted it. But I, I remember buying like four sequential um, pages um, from him once that that had like uh, Superman um, with Robin and it had uh, Bruce Wayne and. And it was it was like you could tell what the story was because the sequential order and what happens. I didn't you didn't need the dialogue boxes. It was just a great and he, and he sold them to me like two hundred fifty dollars for like these four pages, these four continuous pages. I was, and I thought that that's really cheap. Okay, and, this, I, and that was after I bought this page from him like a a few years prior. You know, so I don't know. I, I recommend if you see. Dan you buy art from because he always he's selling it at great prices, you know. So I, I I can just add to that and and say that I saw Dan last in 2019, so four years ago. Um, in fact, in August it'll be so just short of four years. Uh, in August it'll be four years, and um, I felt the stuff was reasonable, but not what I would say cheap. Okay, but again, it. it he could have raised them in the four years since after you bought it, um, or it could just simply it could just simply be you know you and I may not have the exact same you know not all of us define cheap expensive you know the exact same way right so yeah. um, but 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 yeah definitely not what you would say expensive so certainly worth worth going to check out if you're ever at a show right and and he's there as a guest for sure. Well, let me let me tell you like I I bought that that um. That page just showed at WonderCon. So I want to say maybe it was 2015. So it's, it's already a while ago, you know? But okay. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I know what the price was on it. And, you know, okay. it was 40 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. So yeah. for now, a now, Kevich, now that's just not- Kevich piece itself, it's like, wow. You're like, where the yeah. hell yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there was a time in the first half of the 2000s and before, obviously, where stuff like that, uh, Sienkiewicz inked books, like pages from Sienkiewicz inked books, were you know for a while um, he was inking you know certain people here and there throughout the late eighties into the nineties, throughout the nineties into the two thousands, um, and that stuff nobody wanted it, nobody cared, mind you, at that time nobody even cared about his Moon Knight work. I I I took years to sell like my three dozen Moon Knight pages. And the most expensive one was 250 bucks, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It wasn't until the 2000 and I want to say the mid 2010s where suddenly people started showing him respect and wanting to buy his art and paying up for it. Yeah. It finally took off, you yeah. know, but, but yeah, though, that kind of page that you picked up forever, you could have had them for like 40 bucks, 50, 60, you know, yeah. nobody cared, you know? Yeah, you know what? Um, I think Bill's similar to a lot of the uh, comic artists. That, it, that you know, he's he's an artist. He's not like a salesman. He doesn't know how to sell his stuff. Um, he's not. He, he's also you know, um, and I don't think he he puts that much behind. You know, I don't think he worries about that. You know, but then when he got on board with this guy, this is the same the guy that set up his booth. Now is it the same guy that does? Um, Oh geez. Uh, well, Spencer, Spencer is still his rep. Wow. Oh, sorry, sorry. Are you talking about Sinkevich or or Sinkevich? I'm talking. Oh, about sorry, him. I thought you were talking about Dan. Yeah, Sinkevich is still Sa- Sa- Sal Abenanti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's kind of newer, right? Because that guy know how to, knows how to market. It, it, it's not new. It's been a while now. But he, but Sal only started setting up his like uh, San Diego booths. I want to say like. Um, around like 2015 or so before that bill would just like pop in like he'd have a a table at um or he'd be at the vanguard booth where i'd get to sit with him and watch him create stuff yeah i don't i don't yeah i don't remember when what what year it was that he finally got sinkevich 
But yeah, for a long time, it was pretty much just Alex Ross, you know. Right. That's what and, I was trying to think. Yeah, Alex Ross, he was very. Yeah, he was yeah. Big, and, and his numbers were always big for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. But but it was when, when Sal took over from Mitch, forcing Kevage, that's when the price is exploded because he, he himself just decided, okay, we're going to make a market for your stuff that's commensurate with your status as an artist. Yeah. And overnight, I mean, his, his, you know, $1,500 covers were suddenly like six to $8,000 covers, you know? Um, and a lot of us look at, to be honest, credit, credit, credit where it's due. A lot of us were like, wow, this guy's crazy. What a psycho, you know, like he's, 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 this guy's out of his mind, blah, blah, blah. But it didn't take very long for people to be buying it and paying those prices. And then you know how it goes, Lee. Yeah. Once one person pays and another person sees that somebody else paid that price, they're thinking, oh, I've always wanted a Sienkiewicz. God, I can't believe how much they've gone up. But I better get it before it goes up even more. And now that guy buys it, right? And now you start seeing sales and all the other people who feel the same way decide to buy <laughs> it. Right? And it's, it's, it's a snowball effect, right? Yeah, he only got his... his do recognition finally though because i'll tell you um one time when i was uh i think this was in new york uh at the big apple comic con right and carmen infantino was there and i was sitting down with carmen carmine um because like i said i would work with vanguard and he let me just yeah. hang there with these guys right and bill was there at the same time right carmine right. tells looks at me he goes he goes this guy he goes he's a real he's talking about bill he's a real artist he goes he's like a fine artist he yeah. goes, he's not like these other guys that make comic books. He goes, this is real art, he said to me. And this is like 2000, I want to say 2007 or something like that. You know, so this is quite a while ago. Yeah. And Carmine saw it. You know, he recognized that this guy's way beyond a lot of the other artists because of his abilities and like what, what he does with art. If you ever watch him like work on a piece, it's really amazing. Yeah, like, of course. You know, yeah. he, he can do them pretty quick. And it's just like when he puts it down on paper, it's like, wow. That's yeah. Cool. Is pretty sweet yeah absolutely absolutely no well, yeah like i said very happy to have uh that that you had a piece that of, of his uh, i always love showing some cabbage art because i've always been a fan so um really cool even if it was only inked because over over dan's work he's gonna dominate for sure with those inks you know so um yeah really really cool piece so very happy um so stanley wants to know do you have a holy grail Oh uh, yeah, you know I gotta find out which uh, cover that is, but it's um, the Nick Cardi that I was talking about. I think it's Superman two sixty three. It's that cover. That's the one that I got. Oh, the the, the Halloween. 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 Yeah. It's a great cover. It's actually cool. if I mentioned it and the people who know Superman covers, it's one where um, it's this. I'm trying to remember that it's like a Viking, this Viking dude, and he's on the back of this huge falcon that's got Superman by his um, cape. And oh. it's in the air, and it's a really, really nice image too. Um, yeah. It's not ringing uh, bells to me, but I'm sure I've seen I, it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Marcus, I do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got very excited. I start using my hands and stuff, and I get very excited. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but that's that's my grail, and I know somebody on calf has it, and he's never responded to my, you know, uh. you send him more emails. I heard that yeah. sometimes that works. I've heard sometimes some guys say, you know what? Every once in a while I check in with this guy, then eventually he, he agreed to sell it to yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Alberto got my girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right, guys. Let us move on to the next piece for this. We go back to the bronze, the late Bronze Age, two of Dracula 67, Gene Colon. And I believe that's Tom Palmer. Boy, I, I was in the middle. I was doing. I, I will admit, guys, I did this in the middle of the night, uh, like four four in the morning, four thirty in the morning. Um, yeah, so that, that that Tom Palmer inks, of course, everyone. Um, God, sorry, Lee, for screwing up so many times. Um, I've made I, I've made a few mistakes like that over the you know co course of the the last year that I've been doing this. Uh, but typically, it's maybe one per show uh, in like not one per show on average, but. When I when I catch myself on one, uh, as I'm showing it live on air, it's you know typically it's once, and maybe there was an episode where I did it twice. But my God, this has already been like three or four. So so very very sorry. Yeah, no problem. 
That's um, okay. Like I said, then we have to talk more about it, right? I mean, because that's yeah. the ultimate combination of Tomb of Dracula, right? Of course. It's, it's Gene and Tom. So, um, yeah, I actually got this off of eBay. Um, and I and, and it wasn't cheap, but I thought it was – and, and it wound up being a good price because, you know, I, I'm always aware of, like, what the costs are and stuff. But, uh, you know, I really like um, – just the composition it's got most of, look almost all the characters in on one page um it's got lilith in there and that's a great yeah. uh, bird's eye view looking down at dracula it's got a great close-up of dracula's face you know just it's a, it's a great that that lilith panel the way she's arching her back throwing her head back like that that's fantastic you know plus, and you plus. Got a couple of sound effects in there too you got the crack of the lightning right yeah. you get the, the, ringing lightning, of the, yeah. uh, the phone up there yeah yeah the close-up of Dracula is awesome. Um, and then, you know, running away in the bottom panel there. That's, yeah, really, really and He's not in – he's only in two panels. But the fact that it's got every – you know, Van Helsing. Oh, three three panels. Yeah. Three, three panels. Oh, three panels, right, because he's in the lower left too. That's right. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Oh, actually, yeah, he's in four because he's really tiny in the in the Lilith panel too. So, yeah, he's actually in – Oh, yeah. In <laughs> but, um, but the, yeah, the close-up makes up for it, right? Yeah. Close-up. Great. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the money shot right there. Um and and, the two and I love next to each other. Yeah, the two next to each other, exactly. I love the Lilith and him and kind of looks like he's looking at her, right? Like, yeah, that's uh that's really, really spectacular page. So yeah, I'm yeah. good. I, I had been looking since I had gotten that that Batman um page that we showed before, I was really looking for a Tomb of Dracula page too. Not that I, and I'll tell you, um I I, st I have to get like an omnibus. I want to read all of that. I I never really picked them up back then. I've got like one issue or something like that. But I want to read them because the art was so nice. And and I like the you know I'm a horror kid too. Um so I, I would like to read that because I, I bet it, it would be a great read. I you know it's funny Back in my days when I was still a comic book reader collector, um, I got myself the whole set. I actually managed to buy it as a complete 70 issue set from a local dealer friend, a friend of mine. Um, but back in those days, because I was so into, you know, had enough money that, oh, I can start going like full hog and buying whatever back issues I wanted. The problem with that was that it turned me purely into a collector and I kind of stopped being a reader because I just I, I didn't have the time. Like who who has time, right? When I bring in a seventy issue run of some comic in one day, right? And then I'm still constantly buying other back issues throughout the week. Or suddenly I got I got hundreds piled up. Like I don't got time. How am I going to read it? So I never read it. Yeah, so I, I actually yeah. had the same problem. I had all these comics where I didn't hardly. I didn't hardly read it, uh, uh, such a small percentage of them. But nowadays, I mean, I still do buy comics um, from my store, and I'll only buy what I'm reading. And I saw, and especially with the price nowadays, you know, when books are like four or five bucks a piece, you know, it adds up quick. So, um, so if it's not interesting, then it's it it gets canceled, you know. But um, yeah. now, if I look at my, you know, like I said, all the single books that come in, and even like, and now I'm going back and I'm making sure I read like anything that I've saved, and I'm pretty sure. caught up on it, you know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I used to do the same thing. I was too much of a collector, and I had so much stuff I never read. So now I, I'll buy the compilations, like like the best of Batman by certain artists and stuff like that. You know, like right. I got the Walt Simonson one, the Carmen Infantino, and some of them I yeah. still have to read. But um, that's how I'll read them. That's things that I had the single issues of one time yeah. and i never read them and now i can read the hardcover you know? yeah the, yeah the, the gene the gene colon stuff i got the, both of those or two of the three of the volumes of that you know so yeah, yeah. Read those still and uh might as well let's let you know uh just a few months ago uh, a really good friend of mine he was telling me that um i guess he bought the uh the, the tomb of dracula series in uh, omnibus i guess it's an omnibus it must have been an omnibus giant format or whatever and uh he said he read the whole run and uh, he binged it or whatever, and uh, he said it was really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So that's that's that promising. That that. Um, and he's not the first guy who's told me. Like, I've had a few people say that. Oh yeah, yeah. That whole run. Uh, he did mention that that the first five or six issues aren't the greatest, but then it kicks in. And I believe it's because. Is it possible that Wolfman only came in after the first few issues? Maybe. Yeah, maybe that's what happened, and then then and then it got really really good. So yeah, so yeah. Uh, I, I I hope for the day the day to, to to come when I'm 
I'm older, you know, it might be retirement, who knows, but, but at, at one day I want to get to reading all that stuff I never got to read, you know, way back yeah. when. So. Yeah. And I mean, I've done that with, the, I've, or I'm currently doing that actually with the Captain America um, omnibus I have um, of uh, Ed Brubaker stuff. Cause I'm a real big fan of Ed Brubaker. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm reading that Captain America omnibus, which is not a really huge omnibus, but what I did read um, that I was always a fan of, uh, cause uh, people have mentioned it in the comments before. I, I think it was comic art Boston. I think um, about, you know, I like um, Kirby's fourth world stuff. And I finally, I bought the omnibus that had all the fourth world stuff in it. And I read that, I want to say, it might be almost a year ago now, but I, I poured over that and I really loved it. And they, they put everything in chronological order of how it oh, happened. Yeah. And that was coincidence. Really it's so, it's so, it's so, as coincidence would have it, these th the way these things go sometimes, that's so crazy that you mentioned that. Because the same very good friend who told me he read the Tomb of Dracula omnibus, and told me he loved it. He also told me, because he was on this huge binge and he loves buying these, these uh, omnibus big books, you know. He also told me that he read the entire Fourth World Saga, which shocked me, by the way, because knowing my friend, like I know my friend is a, he's always been a Superman fan, but I never took him for the Fourth World Saga kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And so I was shocked. And he told me it was, for the most part, really really good i was like really because i always thought i don't know it's not something that kind of calls to me it never called to me you know but he said it's really good like most of it he said uh, and by the way i think he said of all things he said his favorite was the forever people which to me again the irony i always figured oh man if there's one that's going to suck more than the other, it's going to be the forever people. And again, I'm just, you know, like anybody else, you haven't read it. You're just judging it based on like, you know, the look of the characters, what they look like. Yeah. And, and, you know, yeah. And that's what I felt. But he's like, oh, that was so good. I'm like, wow, really? Wow. So the yeah, forever so cool. people are very 70s looking like like uh, hippies, like kids. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. But that's, you know, what's funny is that that is one of the things I still have from when I was uh, younger my full collection of forever people. I, I actually uh, oh, cool. sent the first issue out to CGC and uh, yeah, I have pretty much a full run. That's like pretty close to near mint for everything, but they're not worth much, you know, cause it's like forever people. Like you said, yeah. Like, yeah, it's forever people. Yeah. But, uh, whatever. One of the things I still have, but Hey, if they're good, they're good. Yeah. More and power. They, and they were good reading. They were yeah. good reading. He, I think he, I think Jack really liked doing that book. I think he liked doing all those books. I think he was really disappointed. Um, when it had to end, I, it all ended, time, yeah. Carmen into, we were just talking about Carmine, but he was ahead of DC at the time. I, I, I don't know if it was, um, I, I forget what the title was. I don't know. President or whatever. Yeah, president or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it was, but he was making decisions, but he got um, pushed out by the higher ups and stuff, Carmine. And, um, and, and apparently they, they weren't tracking the sales very good on that stuff, even though it, uh, <laughs> I'm wondering, is Marcus the only one left here too? All the comments. Oh, we got a, yeah, we got a I, I, one Marvel fan there too. I I was so engrossed in speaking with you for a second. I I was like, oh geez, I I just realized, man, you me you and me have been talking. Nobody else has been talking. I'm like, wait a second, is, is everybody still there? And I'm like, Marcus is still there. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Suddenly that that comment came in, and then I, I I was just like, oh, the first comment in like six minutes or whatever. Holy crap. Okay. Um, but okay, everybody, let's, let's, uh, yeah, I'm sure you're waiting for more art. So let's take a look at the next piece. Um, and for this, we're jumping, um, back into the present, shall we call it, uh, the very, you know, recent contemporary past, I said, I, I suppose. And, um, love this. One of my favorite teams. Oh, please. God, don't tell me. I hope I didn't make a mistake on this one as well. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, let's see, Nightwing number four, Yvonne Hayes and uh, Peter Albert, exactly, 2016, perfect, thank God. Phew! <laughs> um, one of my favorite contemporary uh, artistic teams, Lee, I gotta say, um, and, and I will say, it doesn't matter, like, I, I like Eau Claire Albert and, um, what's his name, um, uh, Hebert Ferreira. Um, I love them both um, when they when they ink these these other Brazilian uh, pencilers and uh, but yeah this team's fantastic really really love it and I wanted to showcase this just for that because it's just a, a really kick ass cover yeah 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with this. I'm a big uh, Nightwing fan, too. I've got quite a bit of Nightwing pages. Um, but, yeah, to get a, a, a nice Nightwing cover. Um, only Nightwing that I, I would say, you know, and this is more recent. I mean, it's from the rebirth. So, you know, what are we talking, like maybe three years ago or something like that? Um, but um, I would love to have one of the uh, covers from, like, the 90s from when um, – Geez, uh, again, like when I don't have somebody's name right in front of me, I, I like forget their name. Um, oh, uh, Scott, uh, um, uh, Greg Land, or Scott McDaniel, Scott McDaniel, Scott McDaniel. I got a couple of Scott McDaniel pages, but uh, uh his cover, like it was weird when Scott McDaniel started doing Nightwing. I, I really liked it, even though uh, I was not a big uh, fan of manga. Like, and it, to me, that kind of looked like a little bit influenced by manga, like the style and stuff. Right. I really liked it, and it was so different. So it was surprising for me to like that, especially since like I'm a Neil Adams fan, and he's more traditional, detailed, and stuff like that. You know. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, the Scott McDaniel run on Nightwing. I read like those first 50 issues or something like that, and that's when I wasn't reading as much. But I was reading that one because I really enjoyed it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, David, uh, good to see you're still there, buddy. Um, yeah, it's a, it is beautiful, and uh, he is uh, also one of my favorite pencilers of the last generation. So, um, yeah, really spectacular. And no, Stanley, not setting a record tonight. And um, Rick, you gotta let me see. <laughs> so this is a uh, this is in reference, Lee, just to what happened last week uh, with the movie. Uh, yeah, uh, episode within an episode. <laughs> Uh, the running man so that's pretty funny yeah. very cool but yeah great 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 cover and uh i i wanted to let you know since you mentioned um uh, scott mcdaniel i i'm actually kind of if you really want one i'm kind of surprised you, you don't have one because there's a collector he's on calf i believe his name is matt moore he for years has been putting tons of mcdaniel art for sale on calf Right. And, and I remember him putting quite a lot of Nightwing stuff, mm -hmm. uh, including covers. You might want to reach out to look, look, look for Matt Moore, M O O R E, and see what he's got in his gallery. Because I, if anybody a lot has of his stuff, comes up for me. Um, it's funny because a lot of the stuff that he's put up recently, it's like make offer and like what we said before about the make an offer. You know, what I mean, it's like. I don't, yeah, like okay. it on there. I don't even bother when I see that. Right. Um, but, you know, he does put price on some stuff. I, I, You know what? I might not have that as one of my keywords, Nightwing, possibly. It just happens that, I, you know, when I see ones I like. But, yeah, if I did yeah. have it as a keyword, I probably would have seen them more. You know? Well, uh, here's a hint, Lee. Um, add that keyword, <laughs> Nightwing. Yeah, right? yeah, that would make more sense, wouldn't it? It might help you. It might help you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, from there, we stick not only to a mo another contemporary piece, but in the Batman family and also more great Brazilian uh, artistry. So this one's fantastic. Check this out. Detective 965, page 18, Splash, Eddie Barrows and Hebert Ferreira. And yes, this one also, you know, along with uh, Yvonne Hayes, I mean, yeah, I love this team. Love, love, love them, man. It's just they're amazing. Spectacular. Yeah, yeah this is uh, like so, so much detail. And like, I, you know, he's he's using some wash in there too. You can tell. Yes, of course. Because that's the way you get that effect. Um, that's right. And, you know, people don't usually use that like on comic book, you know, currently, you know. But right. um, yeah, they're, they're a fantastic team. I, like I said, I have I have to have at least like, I, I, would, I would say I might have like a dozen pages by that team because I, I like their work so much and, oh, cool. um, and, and they're, and it's, they're affordable. Um, you know, they're underrated, I think. Um, but, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Great. Oh. oh yes. Um, the, the Barrows art with the inking. I mean, um, anybody can check it out in Fred Chamberlain's gallery. Um, the, it's called go, go and search it out under super pals. That's the word super followed by P as in Peter, A L S as in Sam, Super Pals, like Super Friends. Um, in that gallery, he's got tons of work by this artistic team. And you're right, Lee. It, it's it's really, I would say, given the quality, I think it's really undervalued. Yeah, 
yeah, I believe yeah, it's Fred's Steve. great. Fred's doing a great job putting them out there and everything. Yeah. But um, I, I guess uh, I don't know what it is. It's like uh, I I bought so much of it because it's it's and I, and I bought it on usually Comic Art Live. Like this is one that I bought on Comic Art Live. I want to say a year ago, probably in May okay. of last year, probably maybe yeah. maybe it was the year before. But that's where I got this one. So yeah. you know, he even discounts it more, like on those coming out lies, like thirty percent off, and I'm like, I gotta buy this. There's no way I can't buy this, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I gotta give props again. I do agree with Marcus. This is one of those times where I do like. I don't like it. I still don't like it as much. I still prefer it in black and white, but I will yeah, give credit and say and say that I do like the colors a lot. Yeah, colors yeah. look real good on this one. Yeah, yeah. they they yeah. add to it. Instead of yeah. taking away from it like that other piece did, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, really spectacular. So really, really cool to have seen that uh, that you had this in your gallery too, Lee, because it's like, yeah. Uh, whenever ever, um, whenever I've had a guest come on where I see they have Eddie Barrow's pieces in their uh, collections, I usually do pick one um, just because I like it so much. And I, I want to put it out there to kind of show more people, you know, and hopefully get them more interested in, in, in his work and, and Fajeda's work. So. Yeah, very happy to show this one for you for sure. And um, all right, everyone, uh, just to give you an idea, we will, it shouldn't be much longer now because we only have a few more pieces left to go. Okay, um, maybe three pieces, I think, three or four. And um, this next one is a rare, I mean, rare for tonight in, in, and in Lee's collection, a rare Marvel piece by one of my favorite artists of the last 40 years. And um, he's doing a little bit of his channeling Kirby here. Let me know if you guys see that. Love this though. The power and impact here is fantastic. Butch Geis, Invaders, number 10 cover from just a few short years ago with the Submariner. I mean, oh God, Lee, I can't tell you how much I love this one. And I'm, I'm, I can't tell you, how, how sad I am that I had to show it so late that Alberto wasn't here to see yeah. this, cat, this cat piece because I think he would love this. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Amazing, yeah. man. Great piece. Yeah. Congrats on picking this one up. Thanks. Yeah, Butch, we, yeah, he's pretty... Uh, guys, guys, guys. Awesome. Guys, guys. Yeah. yeah. Guys, yeah. Um, Butch, and what, does, what is uh, his other name also? Butch? Uh, Jackson. Or... Jackson. Jackson, that's right. Jackson's his given name. Butch is a nickname. Gotcha. Yeah, I, lo I love this just like, like the the angle that he that he chose to draw them at and like the rain really adds a lot to it and and then in, in the foreground you got this they're aiming the gun at him and stuff you know it's like it's a lot so much action in it it's a it's really yeah. a, a, a dynamic piece you know and again the colors were good on this cover too I thought you know I think the colors yeah yeah I agree I, I I do agree yeah very nice I I think. Um, again, I still prefer the black and white, though. Um, but yes, credit where it's due. Very nice, uh, nicely colored, I would say. Uh, Dwayne Zepain uh, loves this, man. It's a banger. And of course, of course, Jason Richardson comes in like all the other dudes, always busting my ass here. Did Coletta ink this one, too? <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah, I'd like to see you guys having to do this for free at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And make no mistakes, all right? Uh, uh, I like Jackson better than Butch. Yeah, he draws better that way, doesn't he, Marcus? <laughs> uh, number one Marvel fan, beautiful cover, he says. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I loved it. Yeah, uh, I still love it. Yeah, fan, fantastic. But uh, tell me, Lee or anybody else, do you guys not see what I mean when I say that there's a slight Kirby influence? Um, take a look primarily at how... The a cap in his his right leg, it's kind of like squared off, um, edged. It's it's like edges and squared off, um, and it's just it's just the old, but it's it's the overall dynamism of it. You know how Kirby had these big panels, these booming, punching panels of of the action happening. That's that's primarily what I mean. It's just it's dynamic. You can you can almost feel. Um, Namor's right fist, even though it hasn't landed on that shield, but you know it's going to land hard very soon, you know? Yeah. If you take into consideration um, anatomy and 
physiology, you, you shouldn't be able to position your body that way. Right. Oh, and, that's what, and that's what Jack Kirby did a lot. Yes, of course, of course. But you could say that pretty much about any artist, right? Any kind of typical action pose is actually impossible to do. If you ever actually tried it, and yes, guys, yes, you can make fun of me. I've tried doing some poses, not because I thought I was a superhero, but because I wanted to prove that some of these poses are ridiculously impossible to do. And if you try it out, you will see just how impossible. Not only are they impossible, but it's like you can't even come close. It's that hard, yeah. But but what's cr what's great about it is that the fantasy of it all, the, the 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 way these guys draw and gals draw, they make you believe it. It still feels like it could be possible because they're superheroes. You know what I mean? But but yeah, humans, regular humans, no, not not uh, not not gonna happen. So uh, yes, uh, Rick, I pulled many an all night all nighter, and uh, the impossible <laughs> twister player like it. Oh, you guys are crazy. Um, but yeah, fantastic cover, Lee. Thanks uh, thanks for having that in your gallery and, and for, for allowing me to show it and be able to pick it uh, to show everybody. Yeah. yeah. Very, very, very cool, man. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, now, I, um, yeah, so uh, just a couple more pieces, everyone. Um, this next one is part of the 25% that was not DC. I picked this one for me and only me, but also for you in the sense that I want everybody to be exposed to, to not only the, the, the artistry here, but because I love this book. It's an original graphic novel. Uh, it's what got me back into collecting after I was gone eight or eight or seven or eight years. Um, here, check this out. Richard Pierce Rayner. From the Road to Perdition, original graphic novel, two separate pages, but I decided they, they needed to just be together um, from, yeah, 1998. Of course, I was away in 98. I was out of the hobby. Um, but when I came back and I think it was 2000 or 2001, I was seeking out non-superhero type work. And this is what was recommended to me. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, I opened it. I, I, first, I saw the cover and I'm like, oh, yeah, this looks good. This, you know, I'm into like crime, right? crime noir stuff and i saw the cover i'm like okay that's good and then i opened it and the very first page i looked at it, i was like oh yeah i'm buying this like this was i didn't have to flip again this 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 is right up my alley and fantastic man so i was happy to see that you uh, also picked up a few pieces from this yeah so so you have a few you said for your collection that's great I, I, um no no i i i never did i i have i have road to perdition pieces yes but I never did get any from this first graphic novel. I only got, oh, I one. Okay. yeah, I only, I only got some from there, the follow-ups. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you something, uh, Ruben. They're available still. Uh, Richard Pierce Rayner, he's got them sometimes on. Um, I know, I know. eBay, he and, on eBay yeah, you know? yeah. I saw, I saw yeah. somebody just posted some on, um, um, what was it uh, that Facebook uh, comic art um, collectors? Um, just the other day and I commented on it because you know two guys said yeah we just picked up a few pages each and and they were still nice but there's so many pages in that original book that you know and he's got some you know so it's like yeah you know I, I was so happy to get and I bought two more after this even so I've got like I think four pages from this yeah from this yeah book. You know, and um, yeah. yeah, the detail that he puts into it. I mean, it, this looks more like uh, an illustrator from the magazines of old, you know, like yes. this is the upper, the, the second page at the top is like, yep. look at all yep. the detail he put into that, the cross. No, 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 absolutely. Um, in fact, um, I believe the only thing from this, uh, these two uh, pages that he didn't use, he probably did not use photo ref. Uh, for for accuracy purposes was the um, one two three so the third panel on the left side page um, mm -hmm. he used it for the background everything you see outside that window yeah. um, but I believe he did not need it for uh, the the uh, the boy um, yeah. but but yeah but you got to do that you need photo fo you know photo ref to get this kind of period drama if you want to go for you know accuracy and realism you know. Uh, it's fantastic, and, and 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 a lot of people will say, you know, and I really hate it because it comes from a place of ignorance. A lot of people will say, oh, like they talk about it like it's this bad thing, like oh, photo 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 ref though, right? Like, yeah, yeah. how well? Who cares? 
What matters is, is how the artist interprets the photo reference. Because I guarantee you, if you don't have any artistic talent and I give you all the photos in the world, you're still not going to come up with anything resembling a good drawing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You still in, in, interpret it in a very nice way, in a, in a good way. It's, 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 a, it's a skill unto itself. Um, and, and, and Richard Pierce Rayner, I mean, like, look at the stylization he used on it. Um, I mean, when, when, he, when he does, like if you look at the fourth panel, the, the extreme close-up of the face yeah. uh, on, on the left panel, look at that, right? It looks like it's just, it's, he's got cross-hatching, but it looks like there's like these invisible lines cutting through the, the cross-hatching. It's just, it looks like you're almost looking at, a, at, a, um, at the image through a computer monitor, if you will. Right. Uh, um, you, you know, um, like in the old days, the eighties, the, the old computer monitors, it's just, it's, it's just, it's amazing. And, and, yeah, and, 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 you know, and these are smaller pages. They're not very big pages actually. Yeah. Um, they're only like, um, geez, I want to say they're like, I don't even think they're 10 by 12. They're, yeah. They're yeah, I know. yeah. 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 Like, I mean, and, and if you remember that the format of those books, well, I, I, actually maybe they were originally in a comic format, but I know that now they put them in like a digest size, like more of like a paperback size when you buy that book. Um, yeah. So I don't, and that's how I read it originally in the nineties. So I'm not sure if it came from an original comic size book or not. Cause I don't remember when it, I guess when it first came out, I, I'm not sure, but I, you know, I had it in the, it, uh, it, it, it was, uh, like the, the original, I mean, the original published version, the original graphic novel, it's, it's, I don't know. Is it co comic size? Maybe a little smaller, perhaps. Yeah. Sure. yeah I have it. The art's much smaller. Yeah. But the art's small. Yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 that's the thing is that um, you you can't do that level of realism and meet but your deadline. No way. Yeah. No, that's it. Like, and you can do it if it's not for a deadline. If right, if it's just for fun for some commission or something. But if, on deadlines, there's no, no, no. You 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 can't. Yeah, there's no way. If you would have taken them. Yeah, way too long. Yeah, it never would have been finished, you know? So um, I did, um, number one Marvel fan, Road to Perdition and Miller's Crossing, two great period pieces, yes. Um, and I wanted to get back to a couple of, uh, yeah, no, so number one Marvel fan, yes, I know it was a Tom Hanks movie. And have you seen it? <laughs> I just said, I just said that, this graphic novel brought me back to reading comics. Come on, you really think I'm not going to check out the movie after I, I just said that? Of course I saw it. And yes, and, and I, I own it as well, of course. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, fantastic. And then more people should. You know, interesting enough, guys, uh, just recently I was reading a, uh, an article online about uh, an interview with Tom Hanks. And he said... Somebody had asked them, you know, is there anything in your career that you did that you felt maybe didn't get enough attention that you are really proud of? And he named the road to perdition. He's like, yeah, I'm surprised. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is, but that's, I think we did great work on that and more people should see it, you know? And uh, yeah, highly recommended. But I, I definitely recommend buying that original graphic novel first because it's, you know, it's not an adaptation of the movie. It's the other way around. The movie came after the graphic novel. So I would say buy that graphic novel. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Especially if you're into, like, crime, you know, uh, the mob. Um, yeah, it, it's fantastic. So, uh, yeah, Dwayne, absolutely photorealistic. Uh, you, Rick, you. <sighs> Good thing Harrison Ford goes in cast for that. You are right, though. I will admit, Rick. <laughs> I admit. I fully admit you're right. Because as much as I love the graphic novel, had he been the lead, I would not have watched it. <laughs> I would not have watched it. No, um, you're right. Um, the, the city scene, fantastic. Yeah, that's what uh, Lee had pointed out. Exactly. And yeah, Mark, uh, exactly. A father-son uh, movie, perfect for Father's Day. So yeah, it worked out good for tonight, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're saying about this. Joe versus Volcano, the legal battle. I don't know. I know that Another sounds Tom like a Tom Hanks movie. Another Tom Hanks movie. Joe well, I know. I, yeah, I, I, I know this. It's, it's the Tom Hanks movie. But what do you mean the legal battle? What, what, what does that mean? Oh my God! Look who came in! <laughs> Look who's back! Oh my gosh! 
Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> See, that's what she did last week. She was one of those, I didn't want to mention names. She was one of the ones last week who said good night to everybody, left for a couple of hours or so, and suddenly was back a couple of hours later. And not only that, but started egging us on to stretch the thing out to five hours. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so, I love that. And she loves Joe the Volcano. Okay, but just tell me, what you mean, Marcus, by the legal battle? Because I, I want to know. I want to know what the joke is there with the legal battle. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean you're not arguing with me? About what? That's from Joe versus the Volcano. Oh. I'm not arguing with you. No, I haven't seen it. Okay. You, have you not seen Have you seen that one? I didn't see that one. I, I, I like Tom Hanks, but weird. I didn't see it. a little weird. I, okay, because I, yeah, I didn't, I skipped that one because I was like, I don't know. It just seems kind of like, oh God, it was one. Of, I thought it was going to be one of those. Tom, wow, you make good decisions usually, but why would you choose that one? You know what I mean? And I didn't it watch a, it. I was like, it was ahead yeah. of its time. It's it's, really? it's like one of those ones. Yeah, it's like I saw. It, I think I might have seen it in the theater, and I was like, that was a weird but very funny movie, and um, it, it holds up. It's really great. Okay, okay. Well, Marcus is saying ah, just for fun, a lesser seen Hanks movie. Okay. I check it out, and I like comedy, so you know. Um, oh, and oh, oh, here she goes. You know, she just doesn't, doesn't waste a, a minute. And of course, Ruben the Collector hasn't seen it. Yeah, it's not sci-fi, right, Karen? <laughs> I've got a. Don't forget, Karen. I've got a whole week to prepare for you and our uh, show next week. I can let you have it like you wouldn't believe next week. So just keep that in mind. Uh, okay. Let's see the phone call. Oh, you're, you're, I guess that you're talking about Joe. So he's from the movie too, and he's got this fake hand, and he's taking the hand, and he's going all over the desk when the phone. I believe that's what uh, number one Marvel fans talking about. It, it was, it, and that's one of the funniest parts of the whole movie too. <laughs> Them's fighting words, woman. <laughs> um, oh, so that was one of the ones he did with Meg Ryan. Yep. Ah, okay. Nick's so first. That- that makes he's what? That, so, Meg Ryan. Yeah. so that makes what? Three of them that they did together? I guess so. Was that three? You've no. got mail. Two. Two. Right, right. That one? Sleepless in Seattle is her too, right? Is that Meg Ryan or what? Yeah, but that wasn't that. But it, was it Tom? Who was it? That wasn't Tom Hanks, was it? Yeah, it was. So yeah, so three big ones. Sleepless in Seattle was Tom Hanks? Yep. Damn, okay. It's been a long time. I enjoyed it. I saw. I saw it. It's been a long, so 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 long. So, um, cowboy. It's a it's a cowboys and aliens movie. Well, I don't know what you mean by that. But there's a movie called Cowboys and Aliens. Oh, Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah. Watch it. Is that Tom Hanks? No. Or oh, is it uh, Harrison Ford? I played uh, James Bond. What's his name? Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Uh, well, which, which, which oh, thanks, thanks, Lee, the guy who, oh, you know, you know that guy, guys. Let me Bond. make fun of you. Let me make fun of you, Lee. You know, guys, you know that guy who played James Bond. That guy there, that white guy who played James Bond. <laughs> uh, oh, that's too much. Um, but uh, Fox, who's Fox? What's Fox? What are you talking about, Fox? A Fox movie? Wait, what's that? Oh, Megan Fox? I don't know. I don't know. What, what you, I, you lost me there. Uh, Marcus says, that's why we can't let go of AOL accounts? Why? Why? You're losing me now. Ah! <laughs> uh, Daniel Craig, Marcus says. Is that who you're Daniel talking Craig. about? Daniel Craig, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, interesting. All right, all right. We're getting off on the movies. It's not, it's not, it's not movie time. We got to get to... Uh, it's, uh, we got to finish the show. There's only one piece left, everybody. Wow. All right. Um, it's... It's a holiday tomorrow. What's a, what holiday do you guys have tomorrow? Because it's not a holiday here. Even Lee doesn't know, and he's American. Michael, you don't know what you're talking about. Look, I think you're just going to be late for work tomorrow. That's what, <laughs> I think that's what's what's going to happen. You're going to you're going to be late, and they're going to fire you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, Mark. Okay. Thank you for that. I got to tell you, it's been a long time since I watched it. I don't remember that. Daniel Craig was in Road to Perdition. So put the put the page really? back on. Daniel Craig's character is on one of those pages. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. 
Uh, it's the bottom number? right corner. Oh, that's it. And, and the and the one uh, in the panel next to that, of course, uh, with the hat on too. So that's Daniel Craig's um, character. He's the one that um, oh, interesting. Kills, okay. kills his son. Oh, okay. Oh man, I really gotta watch that again. Um, highly recommend it. Whoever you haven't watched it, everybody, you should you should watch Road to Perdition. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, and Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds vaguely familiar, but um, Juneteenth. Okay, it's one of those oh, fake right. holidays. Okay, yeah. And, but that's like a fake holiday, right? It's one of those it's things. New, it's kind of newer. It's newer. It's um. But it, but is it official or is it just one of those things? Like it's like every official. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, is that is that related to slavery? Yeah. Ah. It's, okay. Uh, the, I think the last day that um. Uh, in, in Texas, the, um, the slaves were told they're free now because the um, Emancipation Proclamation happened yeah. on that day. Oh, oh, well, if it happened on that day, though, why did they, why is it? Why, no, why it happened, they, they were informed. That was the last, I think that was, they were the last people to be informed or something like that. And it, it was like a while right. after, you know, but it takes a long time for that information then to get down to texas i guess got, got you but i guess i'm saying isn't that one of those holidays where it's supposed to be you know celebrated or considered the whole month of june isn't that why they call it juneteenth because it's all all month long or something i thought that's what it meant no okay maybe not or just because just because the event happened in june but then i don't know i don't know it's just a weird name I think it, it sounds was 19. okay okay Fair enough. Thank you for the uh, American history lesson, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, and Mike tells us that it's an old traditional holiday as of 2020. 2020 yeah. uh, and it's, we're being told it's a federal holiday? Wow. Okay. Now, nah, Marcus, but the thing is, is like I, I'm aware of it, but like I said, I, I keep hearing these things on the, you know, in the internet, right? Which is, of course, it's mostly American based. And so for me, I hear, I see like almost on a daily basis, I keep hearing people say like, oh, today's Batman day. Oh, today's Star Wars day. Oh, today's X-Men or Spider-Man. And it's like, okay, clearly those are fake days. Who's coming up with this stuff? Like who, who comes up and claims that every day of the year is a superhero's celebration? Like seriously, I want to know who, who comes up with this stuff because clearly they're fake holidays. There is a play. I, I watched like um, not sixty minutes, but uh, Sunday morning. Um, the company that actually gives the names to these days now. It's this little company. I can't remember where they're at, but um, people call up and uh, they put in requests or something like that. I think they might pay a small fee or something like that. And all of a sudden, it's that's their day. You know? Oh my God! Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh yes, National Talk Like a Pirate Day. I've heard of that too. Yeah. Hallmark. I don't know what you what you mean, uh, Mike. And if you're American, your work will let you know of this. Yeah. I doubt your work would say, hey, guys, everybody, just to let you know, today's uh, national, uh, happy national Spider-Man Day, uh, you know. <laughs> I work all holidays. If I have to work, I have to work. Canadian. Christmas. <laughs> I would love, yeah, it would be it would be nice. Oh, me, I don't care. But for me, you know, where you work at home, every day is like a holiday. At one one mixes into the other Stanley. The weekend is the same as a weekday, whatever. So, and I'm honestly, I'm not a, I'm not really a holiday celebrator apart from like Christmas and um, Halloween. I don't celebrate Halloween, but you know, whatever. I like Halloween. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't follow. Like, honestly, look, I'm gonna be honest, and uh, you guys, uh, some people, uh, Karen's probably gonna get really pissed at me now. Um, I didn't even know today was Father's Day until my daughter, when I got out of bed, and she said, "Happy Father's Day," uh, and she so she took me by surprise. <laughs> so, um, so I had forgotten. I mean, I knew, I knew you know, a couple of weeks ago, but but or sorry, a month ago when we scheduled this this tonight's show, and so, cause somebody only because somebody had mentioned, "Oh yeah, yeah," but that's uh, Father's Day, and uh, oh okay, whatever. And then I forget. I don't really do eh, whatever. I'm not, you know. I, Every day is the same to me, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yes, she's a great daughter. Yes, yes, she is, actually. She is, absolutely. I, I said she's my holy grail, for sure. Um, National Maple Syrup Day. You know what? I should check, Marcus. They, we may actually have that. 
<laughs> but but since I don't really follow holidays too much, I, I wouldn't know. So uh, see, there you go, Dwayne. August first is a spider is Spider Man. Isn't that crazy? You, that, that you would even remember that is insane to me because it's not a real holiday. So yeah, that's 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 crazy. Yeah, but Marcus, it's a if it's a day off, they'll tell you. Of course, I guess so. But none of these superhero days are days off, right? Please tell me they're not days off. I'm gonna go and do what I can to move to the United States if if that's the truth. Because <laughs> if anybody's workplace is giving them the day off because it's National Spider-Man Day or any superhero day, yeah, I don't know. The apocalypse it's on its way. I, I you know, I don't know what to say anymore, you know. Uh, but okay, guys, everybody, uh, want to close this out. So let's show the last uh, piece of art there uh, from Lee's collection tonight. Um, get, <laughs> new holiday, any day off is good. I guess that's that's the truth, ain't it? Uh, National Maple Leaf Day. Uh, you get Crotch Goblin Day off. You do. You do. You deserve it. You deserve that one. Uh, I'm taking Saint of Killers Day off. <laughs> National Donut Day. Is that real? Because uh, you gave a... A precise date so I'm, I'm actually inclined to believe it was it's actually real uh, but okay everybody let's look at the last piece here and i saved this one for last because i really thought it was kick-ass cool and i know that lee really loves it um maybe his favorite piece in his collection he can remind us if that's the truth or not and certainly couldn't have left it out because of that um and before I do that, one last second, because I know a couple of more comments came in. Ruben wants to celebrate National Harrison Ford Day uh, or National Science Fiction Film Day. How about that? Democrats, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get that one. What does Democrats have to do with that? Uh, Canada should get Hawaii, Hawaii Pizza Day off. <laughs> okay, you guys are going. We're going off the rails now for sure. Um, so yes, this is last. Tired. Yes, the last. They're getting, a little, they're getting a little tired and they're getting a little sappy right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, okay, everybody. So that piece, that last final piece, check this out. We're going to do a strobe effect. We're in the club as usual. Check this out. So this is by Brazilian artist Jack Herbert, Action Comics 981, double page slash page 1011 from 2017. And we are in the club. Don't, don't. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Dance, dance, monkeys, dance. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool, man. Yes, very, very cool. We'll leave it on this because I love, I love uh, uh, all the techniques he used for all the reflection and the sky and all that stuff, man. So tell us everything that you love about this, Lee. Yeah, I mean, like you said, he he uses so many different techniques. I mean, look at all the solids he has back there as far as the uh, – um, the city and also um, to the left of it, um, I guess out to, to the horizon. And then he's using these washes for the sky. And look at what a great job he did with the the clouds. And then he's he's using his brush also to create the water effect down there. Um, I mean, yeah. I think I'm trying to remember who it was. It might have even been um, either it was yourself or Marcus um, that put a, a comment um on my uh, calf page about it being, I think it was, maybe it was you um, about it l looking like it's actually uh, a commission because of the fact that what it's depicting, you know, it's got yes. everything in it. It's got, you know, Superman's uh, heroic uh, and he's prevailing over like his biggest uh, nemesis. So you got Zod, you got um, the Eradicator, you got the Cyborgs, uh, Superman, they're all getting blasted by Superman there. And it's a two-page spread. I mean, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. I I, I, I love it. And like I said, uh, for me, and again, I say this, hopefully you understand when I say this, that it's not in any way whatsoever um, to denigrate the figure work. Um, but I even... And I, I think I might have left. I might have said this in the comment I left for you on on in your gallery. Uh, to me, what blows my mind more than anything is the actual backgrounds. It's the water at the bottom, and the sky at the top. I mean, it, 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 because of technique, obviously, right? Um, not that I don't like the beautiful little fine line cross hatchings all over the figures and stuff, obviously. But but yeah, you just don't see the artist typically doing skies and water like that. It's just and the the the, the 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 lights off coming off from 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 the bridge 
glowing and 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 bouncing off the the, the water, the reflecting right. of that. It's fantastic. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, just just brilliant. So yeah, for me, wow. Loved it, as you know. He must have put a lot of time into this. That's all I could say. And he did everything on this. So he's penciler, anchor. I mean, I can't imagine how much time he just put on this one spread. No, I I, I, I agree. And, uh, yes, Karen echoes my sentiments. I love the clouds and the moon. Yes. And, um, yes, our number one Marvel fan also loves it. Awesome DPS. And Marcus says, calm waters. They are. They are very calm waters, and and it's just something about it. Like it just, ah, oh man, I don't know. I love it. I love the top and the bottom, and I love the fact that the my two sort of favorite parts about it, right? Which is you know the the, the backgrounds. I love the way that because of how he laid out the page, you know those two elements are sandwiching. They're in other words framing all the figures, so your eyes still go to the figures. Um, yeah, it's just brilliant, man. Brilliant. Um, and I, I got to ask you, um, so when you got this piece, because I think I think you said, did you say that you had gotten this from Jack directly? No, no, I got this off eBay. Oh, yeah, eBay. It's, it's one of those ones that I was watching for a while, and then uh, and I was like going, oh, do I want to spend that much? And then the person discounted it, and I was like, oh, I'm going to buy it now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. So it had it had it had been there at a fixed price for a while. For, for a long time, yeah. Wow. And I guess he finally decided to just and he took like he took a nice thirty percent off of it or something like that. And I was okay. like, okay. I said that's all it took. That's all it took okay. for me. I was like, at the time, I'm like, okay, even if I don't have the money right now, I'll put it on the credit card or whatever. I just want this, now, you know, because I I liked it that much. And yeah, it's one of my favorite Superman pieces because it's just so well done. I thought, um, like you talked about the cross hatching and all, like just, um. You know how he, you know Superman's face. You know the positioning, like even like overall the positioning, like how he's got it on that angle. It's just you know really, just really yeah. nice piece. Yeah, no, it's fantastic, man. It's uh, beautiful, and uh, that's why I wanted to. I, I usually try to save what I what I feel is like either the most exciting or best for last, so to speak. I figured uh, I, I'd save that for you. And since you hadn't seen it till now, I figured you must have known it was coming. Right, so <laughs> especially since you have it on the background for the uh, intro yeah. to your show, <laughs> exactly the thumbnail. Of course, I used it for the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So had to do that. I mean, um, yeah, it was it was great, great to see it. Um, Dwayne is a pain. Great to share it, of course. Um, Dwayne's a pain. Great collection, Lee. Thank you for coming on and sharing with us, and thank you, Ruben, once again for a great show. You're very welcome, and thank you for the compliment. I, I do deserve an occasional compliment for all the shit you guys give me. Um, good night and have a tremendous week. Um, yeah, thank you, Dwayne Zapain. Appreciate it. And uh, especially for last week, uh, for, for being a part of that uh, craziness. Uh, but it was crazy fun, wasn't it? It, it? One of my favorite episodes of all time, in spite of the fact that it went five hours. I mean, I think that's what kind of made it great. But uh, So thank you very, very much, um, as always. Uh, Marcus, Ruben didn't pick the Commandy cover because of that. <laughs> so that's a, that's a little joke because I've gone on a tangents in the past trying to basically tell people that black and white artwork should never be presented with any color on the presentation. Everybody can look at it now. Joke yeah, there you go. Look at it, guys. Look at it. Just, 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 just avert your eyes from the blue on the sides and the top and bottom, guys. Uh, I think you need color. <laughs> for the contrast yes stanley great show uh, lee and ruben and he says the second longest not bad you are right actually this is this is as of this very minute it has become what what would have been the second oh. yeah if it wasn't for last week we would have hit the, the the record you know um yeah so very very cool glad you liked it everybody thanks for for sticking around as well um this late uh fun show great collection lee thank you thank you rick as always I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, I guess, Marcus, you're talking about the Commandy, I'm assuming. Um, but then again, you probably think that the blue matting is gr is glorious. So um, I I will let you decide <laughs> <laughs> which one you like better. Uh, look at Marcus. Look at this guy. Yeah, that's what I was laughing at. <laughs> no, that would we're, – we're done with the comic art. So to, to set another record – and so it's so interestingly because it's literally at this exact point – in last week's episode, where it, it like literally at this, you know, uh, record breaking, you know, three hours, 53, 54 minutes, 
that's when it suddenly, you know, these guys were like, oh, you might as well make it to the fourth hour. Go to the fourth hour. Yeah. And then we started talking about stuff and it, it became a movie thing. And next thing you know, yeah, it's five o'clock, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, number one Marvel fan. Always a great trailer. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, I do, honestly, you guys know, I, I really do uh, appreciate you all. Especially those of you, I appreciate everybody. I always say, uh, even the the you know the, the rewind viewers, the people that only watch a few minutes of any episode, but especially my guests. So obviously, thank you very much, Lee. Again, man, I, I had a, I hope you had a good time. I had a great uh, time. Thank you for having really, me on. Really oh, my pleasure. It, it it really was my pleasure. And, and I, thanks I, for all the guys in the chat too, man. That, that, lots of good they, uh, comments. And, yeah, they make know. it fun. They, they make it. This is why this is the thing is I always I always tell them, you know, and they're sick of hearing it, I'm sure. But I said I could have done a, a channel where it's similar to the Comic Art Live where, you know, oh, the guest comes in and I kind of just interview the guest. Right. And everybody in the chat just sort of listens captively. And I occasionally highlight a comment or two or whatever. Right. Uh, and ignore most of them. But. That's not what it, I just I had no interest in that. To me, I just like people. I like talking with people. I like looking at art with people. And I just said, you know what? As long as I can get these guys and gals in the chat to speak up and, and make comments, I will highlight all of them if I'm able to, you know, and I will respond to all of them if I'm if I'm able to. Um, and then they make it what it is without, a, 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 you know, of course, with a. With a guest, you know, without a guest, I can still do this. I can I can produce some kind of content without a guest, right? Talk on my own about comic art or whatever. But that would be boring, and I don't want to do that. But these people in the in the chat that that take the time to come in for the live segment, especially those that stick around as long as they do, they really are the heart and soul of what I'm doing. Without them, I wouldn't do this. That's the that's the absolute truth i wouldn't do it because without them it would be just oh either me talking by myself or me interviewing people and like i said that's just not as exciting without the interaction from everybody else in the hobby that comes in you know i just it makes all the difference to me that's that's all i'm trying to say you know um so yeah for me they're 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 awesome the show is all about them and that's why i'm so grateful for them um and I'm willing to take the shit that they sling at me uh, every week. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I know they, they do it with love, hopefully. Uh, but uh, yeah, so thanks to all of you. Thanks, uh, everyone, really, in all sincerity. And oh, Karen wants to let me know something. She's probably going to insult me. I can't wait to watch the middle of the show on Rewind. <laughs> okay, okay. It was long, Karen. And, 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 and some of these people, for like there was a six-minute stretch, just so you know, a six-minute stretch where nobody said anything and Lee suddenly noticed. And then a, a moment later, I noticed. Yeah, we were both wondering, hey, did everybody fall asleep or leave? Or what? Um, but uh, no, it was fun. And there's a lot of talking, though. Um, so I don't know if you're going to have time to, to listen to it all. But uh, yeah, it's always a blast for me anyway, certainly. And like I say, uh, uh, you guys make it a, a, a massive, massive amount of fun for me. And because there's no money in it and, 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 and all this work has to be done to do this, that's the only motivation I have is you guys continuing to come in and, and want to have a good time and, and look at good art, have some laughs. That's my motivation. So thanks uh, to all of you, everybody. And um, Lee, um, stick with me for a minute. I'm just going to I'm just going to close out the show with the um, with the uh, what you call it, the the the. It's, it's so late. I'm tired now. Uh, thumbnail for next week. Um, so you can say your bias to everybody now. And uh, I'm going to cover the screen. Um, great. I, I had a great time, Ruben. Thank you so much. And thanks for everybody that participated. I see Stanley, Marcus on there, Mark, um, Maki yeah. uh, number one Marvel fan, um, Karen, uh, Rick Welch, a bunch of you guys, and even the, the people that left that are going to be able to see this uh, when they watch the rewind because they had to leave earlier. But uh, I had a great time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate it. Just so you know, the kinds of people we're dealing with, this is how they get me to set records. Right. 
<laughs> they know we're closing out and they start doing things like, can we give a long discussion about the future of the hobby? <laughs> yes, great question. Follow it. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys, that ain't going to happen. Um, we're hitting four minutes in about a minute or two. Um, so we are going to say good night. Um, so thank you again to everybody. Um, Lee, can you, can you, can you give me a minute? Can you, um, um, give me, okay. So just stick with me. Um, and I'll be with you in, uh, in, a in another minute or so. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks again. Bye guys. Um, okay. Everybody. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. See you. See you all next week. Get ready for the, Oh, I see you're going to lay it on me. Are you? Oh, wow. I've created a monster here. I thought I had a, a just a sweet, sweet woman. <laughs> <laughs> who I was just out of the kindness of my heart trying to help out, you know, and, and, and wow, it's like a month later, uh, suddenly you're, 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 you're giving it to me worse than these guys. Um, but uh, yes, we will see you next week, everyone. Um, please tune in for Karen's episode. And let me put that here. Um, here we go. So uh, same time, same channel as always, of course. Um, and same day, of course. So June 25th, that is actually my sister's birthday and, uh, my good friend's birthday as well, but we will be here as usual. Um, so please do tune in for that. It should be a riot. And, um, unfortunately guys, uh, we cannot set any, cl anything close to any records next week be <laughs> because, um, as I've mentioned in, uh, previously when I've talked about, uh, Karen's episode, um, she will be giving me a time limit, which should be two hours, perhaps slightly more, but, uh, yeah, so we're not going to come anywhere close to it. And, uh, but yeah, we will see filibuster next week. <laughs> uh, so good. Uh, character should be very fun. She will be fun. She is fun. She is fun. Um, it, I, I wish it could be long. I wish it could be five hours, honestly, next week. Um, but it promises to be, uh, fun for sure. Even if it is not long, Stanley. Um, so again, thanks everybody. And yeah, I guess you too, Karen. And, uh, thanks guys. We will be in touch. And, uh, we'll, uh, those of you who are going to be at Nikki B's show on Friday, we'll see you there. And, um, for the rest of you, I guess, uh, yeah, we'll see you next Sunday. Peace.